tomorrow and next week during our main event. But tonight we start with the qualifiers. So, Shy Guy, what are we looking at tonight for the qualifiers? All right. We are starting with a, a very wide field here. 32 teams are going to, to be vying for four spots in our main event when it's all said and done. We start with the 32. Those have been split into eight groups of four. Uh, and throughout the, the remainder of today, each team will play three matches. The, the top team from each group will emerge into a single elimination bracket that will be uh, on stream tomorrow evening. The top four out of that make it on to the, the main event. So uh, we are, are kind of jumping right into it. The, there is no kind of room to, to kind of get your bearings, to get your feet up underneath you. You've got to, to be ready right out of the jump. And, and I'm sure that our, our teams are. I'm sure too. And you know, ultimately, you know, this is when you have to put everything on the table. I mean, it doesn't get any bigger than this. We've got a lot of the best teams in T2, T3 here. Um, we're going to see purple and our zero in just a couple moments here. We want to start also by thanking our sponsors for the event. So our sponsors, one of them is Vite Ramen. You can get 10% off your order using coupon code IMPACT. If you don't know about Vite Ramen, you absolutely should. They're a savory three-minute meal with all the nutrition you need. And we're also sponsored by Advanced.gg. You can also use code IMPACT for 10% off. Easy to remember. And to put it simply, Advanced GG is a gaming supplement company with a mission to produce only innovative product, products that work products that do exactly as they're advertised and so when we're looking at something like this I mean, we've seen purple a bunch the two of us we've seen our zero and we were talking about the meta as we were getting on here shy guy what sort of things do you expect this it looks like we're going to be on nepal for the first map you know i i think you know this is and this is true for kind of the wider meta that i think we're going to see throughout the event to today tomorrow and into to next week but i think it's especially true in nepal the, the name of the game is Variety right now. Overwatch is in this really interesting balance state right now where teams really have the opportunity to, to kind of play to their strengths, to, to find the compositions that, that work in their favor. Uh, and especially when we're talking about control where you've got those three different submaps, you, you need to be kind of versed in, in all of those different comps. You need to, to have a plan for, for each individual map. And uh, so we'll, we'll get to see teams kind of leaning into the strengths. So it, it gives us a good kind of sampling of what these teams are capable of, what they are comfortable with uh, as we, we head into the rest of the series. Absolutely. And we saw sort of that variety that you were talking about too the other day. We saw, you know, third impact and Doge, obviously in contenders and a grand finalist. And we were, and, um, you know, every map really had an entirely different comp. So if your team just isn't, you know, super prepared to, to slice things up a different way, I think you're really going to be struggling. And as you mentioned before, I mean, best of three, you, you could be looking at two games and out. We'll, you know, it's it's a group stage, so they will have three best of threes to make up ground. But with with such strong teams, um, we can even look, if we look at the brackets a little bit, I mean, we've got... Obviously, we just mentioned Purple in our zero. Later in the stream, we'll be watching Kratos, a Team Savages 5.0 with a lot of great players. We've got the Dojo coming up last. I mean, these are these are loaded teams here, Shy Guy. Absolutely. I mean, like the the best of the best are out to to play when it comes to these tier three teams, trying to to get a shot into the main event, trying to to get a chance to kind of prove themselves on a, a little bit bigger stage than they they might have had in the past. So it's going to be really exciting. Uh, to see who comes into to today's matches and really steps up, who is ready for the, the moment, because it, it's undeniable that we have a lot of talent here, uh, but it just comes down to, to who is actually going to, to be able to do it when it matters. Uh, and that, that that's the, the question that I'm really kind of carrying into to each and every match that we have. I have to agree, and I think... Um... It's weird to think that we're in a balanced state. I mean, it wasn't too long ago that we were looking at goats. We were looking at, you know, some of these other bunker comps and things where it's just like, okay, this map again. We know it's going to be a, a mimic game. But, like, you really, if you have a team that likes dive, you can run that right now. If you have a team that likes bunker, you can do that. I mean, you don't have to just run double shield or something right now. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're seeing it here in Tier 3. We see it all the way up to, like, the highest levels of competition in the Overwatch League. Uh, if you have the right players, the right personnel, and the right game plan, you can really force a, a lot of different looks and maybe be catching an opponent off guard a little bit um, if they, they aren't expecting what you are, are kind of bringing to the table. So uh, we'll, we'll see if teams have kind of pocket strategies that they, they have prepared 
for this event because you know like you said what you know the this is really kind of do or die right now one team from each group gets out so like one loss can be enough to to kind of injure your hopes of making it to that main event uh which is of course why all these teams are here so you know it, it's really going to to come down to the, the execution throughout today for sure and so it looks like we're just we're going to be loading into our first match in just a second here um early expectations here for each team i mean we've seen i wouldn't be surprised to see like i said i think because we saw in the contenders the other day that might influence some of the decisions made here i don't think there was probably an eyeball in this tournament that missed that so i wouldn't be surprised a lot of uh, if we see a lot of double main tank um or double shield tank i guess early on yeah, I mean, if that's the case, uh, especially going into this first map, uh, I am looking over towards the the side of our zero. I know Train Cloud is probably one of my favorite Sigmas to watch uh, in the entirety of Tier 3. So getting a, a chance to put him on a power pick like that, something that can make a lot of impact uh, for himself and for the, the team as a whole, I think is a, a really good game plan for them to, to play around. So uh, we'll see what they are going to be, be capable of as we roll out here onto Nepal. It's going to be village first, so expect to, to be seeing, you know, the, those Reinhardt-based compositions, maybe some Reinarissa, potentially Azaria. But I've seen a lot of Symmetra rollouts on this point in particular as of late. Uh, so so don't be surprised if she's popping up uh, in just a moment. I'd really like to see a Symmetra. I think really? and we, we, I, I know better. I shouldn't even say anything, but we're seeing some at least teams thinking about it early on or baiting us as casters. But um, I, I think Symmetra just offers you so much here, especially if you can get that early advantage on the point and okay. just get that early hold. I mean, you can easily be looking at a 40 or 50 percent advantage right off the gate. I don't know why you wouldn't take a chance to earn that. Yeah. Interestingly, right now, Purple not going to be running the May, which is kind of like the power pick here on Village. You can wall off that point so, so easily. So Zeus has to come up big. HK as well. They're going for the, the Ash Echo comp here. Uh, and the, the, the ease of execution there is not nearly the, the same as it is for that, that May Symmetra duo on the other side. We're going to see an early start here. Purple going to start off on the high ground, it appears. So we're going to see totally different starts than neither of them. We usually, it's more typical to see double high ground, but not this time. Train Cloud's just gonna be able to hug this corner here, be able to withstand pretty much everything that's coming. But he's gonna be the first one to go down. He backed out a little bit too quick and didn't have any shield left over here. Zeus just chunking it out. And we're gonna see another pick on the side. No, he makes that six on two. The lamp is out. HK gonna find three. Ray gonna clean it up and they're gonna be able to retake it easily. I mean, that, that's just really disciplined play coming out from Purple right there. They know that they don't have the comp to, to just push in onto the point and take the brawl, so they poke from long range. They've got the Echo coming in off the, the flank. The Dynamites from Zeus were massive, and they, they're slowly able to, to win out that fight to poke down our zero and now force uh, a little bit of a change here with Sinoid going over to the Ash as well. And I think that'll serve them well. I mean, Zeus already does have ult, so they're going to be a pretty significant ult disadvantage here as they work it. But when the window comes up, we're going to see a lot of ults. Gravitic Flux going to find one, take out Trinko and Sinoid. Again, this is a 6 on 4. HK and Vega going to be the ones doing the cleanup here. Zeus going to finish them off, and that's a clean ace here out of purple. Yeah, fantastic work there. Excellent ult usage. They they only have to commit that Gravitic Flux along with the Amp Matrix. So now they're, they're sitting pretty. They're going to come into this next fight with that duplicate for H key. Zeus has Bob as kind of a stalling tool here, all waiting for, for Samaritan to get to that Supercharger to really close out a fight. We're going to see so far, it looks like they're going to try this middle underside. We'll see how it pays off for them. They're going to try to work their way up on the high ground. But they're going to have to face an onslaught from two sides. And the spot basically sets up two separate fronts here. Owen doesn't quite find anybody here. HG going to take out the lamp. Going to be taken out by Sinoid, able to find the pick here. As our zero is going to begin to look at point. Sinoid finds another in Greg. Set themselves up for a six on four. And they're going to walk right under them and just take over point. And, and no real contest coming out there at the, the tail end of that fight to, to stall for time. Uh, in fact, Purple are kind of sticking around a little bit, trying to, to back out now uh, our Samaritan and Vega, but they, they are probably just going to get run down here from Detroit. Now, we'll get some backup from their team, but still, that, that all kicked off as HK got caught out a little bit after the duplicate wore off. 
went in a bit too deep, and from there, uh, Hour Zero able to, to get the flip they were looking for. We're going to see them just now cross 40%. Meanwhile, Purple is at 78%, so really, there is a reality where they can get one retake. And if they're able to stagger long enough, they could win it on one fight. But here comes the window and the retake opportunity. We're going to see a couple ults come out. Bongo is taken out along with the lamp. Side note, able to find Vega with Bob and takes down Samaritan as well. The really flux doesn't find anybody. But here comes Zeus. Able to pick off two with Viro takes out HD, winning that Echo v Echo action here. We're going to see a transcendence from Alexio trying to just maintain this defensive here. They still have Bob active. So they think they still have an opportunity to win. Now they have what's left here of our zero kind of hiding inside that the health pack. It looks like we're already going to see the next fight first out here as respawns are sinking up. Yeah, indeed they are. It's going to, to be a quick recontest, but HP oh, back. Able to take a two for one. I think he'll take that most days of the week and especially today. Jam going to be taken out as well. That's and that's a three on point. They're gonna begin to work their way in here. Grace got this one on one trying with Beacon, but not quite getting where he wants it yet. Not able to take him outside. Do I get it? Fine, too. Shatter's gonna come in. He looks for the Train pin. Club. Able to take out Samaritan here. And Train Club is popping off and able to finish off the round here. Uh, HK tried to, to put on his carry pants there, but Train Club says no. Gets back to the fight at literally the, the perfect time there with that Shatter. It, it could not have gone better to, to save his team and to, to secure that round win uh, there for hour zero. Uh, a good start for them after they, they got off to kind of a rocky beginning on Village. They're able to, to turn things around and hold steady. Now we, we shift gears, head over to Sanctum, uh, where I think though those kind of pokey compositions are going to, to come into play a little bit more. It, what's weird is, so we you talked about early, Purple showed great discipline, but at the end it seemed like they just sort of got staggered and lost mm -hmm. a little bit of that discipline. I think you'd agree on that. It just it was, wasn't their best out, outing at the end there. No, I mean, they they kept trying to continue fights that were already kind of lost or were at least not really winnable, uh, and it comes back to bite them. Now they're going to be running uh, the, pretty much the, the same comp once again here, but viral. Now picking up the, the Torbjorn for that, that kind of extra spam damage down these long sidelines. And we'll see who able, is able to get that battle of the shields here and the long snipe lines here first. So far, not a whole lot. Drain Club going to fall fairly low here, but Jam's been able to keep him up as well as Cupcake. We see pretty much similar comps here. Greg's going to find the first kill here on the Sinoid. That's going to be a huge pick out to get Sinoid's been doing so much damage fairly unrelenting but in the meantime here purple able to secure point yeah and that's gonna be massive if they can continue to win out this fight they get a nice pick onto jan and the rest are falling one after another that is exactly what you're looking there for uh purple they they not only get the the point flip but they somehow win the head-to-head -head fight even as hk is kind of off on a, an alt angle yeah and i really like that take there i don't even know if i would like, I, a part of me wants to say it was really sneaky because it really had no opposition here. Um, oh, and part of me wants to like credit our zero for or just a little bit of patience thinking we can take it back. But so far, I haven't even been able to see much of an effort here though. But as Train Cloud's going to move on to point here, it's set up. I think they're not going to be able to test that either. So again, each team going on to test on the point. But here comes Greg, able to take down Train Cloud. Zeus finds Cupcake. They set themselves up again. Two pick for a six on four, but Beacon Bauer jumping on the point, taking out really quickly. The retakes is in, and they're going to cross 40%. Well, the immediate retaliation there on the train cloud as he sneaks into to kind of take point. The, the wraparound from Greg is beautiful there, gets the accretion, focuses uh, a train cloud down alongside HK. So purple maintain control for the time being and they haven't had to, to really use much in the way of ultimates so far they're, they're going to be loaded coming into this next fight yeah and we'll see how they're able to use that multi economy here with, with almost five available here see if they use everything or are able to just maintain it with nothing so we're gonna watch here they sent bob on the point trying to make his note the other bob is just off point even though he's on that same part of the map bob's gonna find no, what Zeus is about to take out Sino here. H key and take out Beacon. And so it's a fight now, basically, in the spawns here. Way off the point. And it's almost already crossing 90% here. It's possible for this to be ended here. Train Cloud, as he's going to ult. 
but for Vague Flux, he's got to get back on the point here with Viro, and I think they, they'll be able to do that now. Yeah, they're going to be able to make it. They've even got the Wrecking Ball in for the Bauer as they, they will get the retake, but how long can it last? They, they are going to, to have a little bit of time to reset, but now their comp is mismatched. They've got this Widow in from Sinoid trying to, to be the carry, but with the, the Wrecking Ball, they've got to alter how they, they play. It's got to be much more harass-based uh, rather than, than just trying to take these shield moves because they'll definitely lose. And they have minimal CC here. I think Greg is the only actual CC they have. And Samaritan with sort of a, a, a soft CC, if you want to call it that, to stop the ball. So not a lot they can do to contest him. Just literal free roaming here. Beacon's going to back off, go back to his team on the far side. Beacon going to be the first one taken out, though, by Greg and that rock that we just mentioned here. They're able to retake point here. Purple is, and they've got an opportunity no one's gonna to touch this one away. And they do yep. it. Yeah, no one makes it into to touch. As soon as they deal with Beacon Bauer, the, the two-man wrecking crew of Greg and Zeus, they, they kill off the wrecking ball, and they provide a distraction for the, the rest of the team to get that flip in, to, to get the overtime burning away. Uh, and it works out beautifully. Purple forces a, a third map here on Nepal. We're headed uh, to Sanctuary to decide it all. Shrine? Sanctuary? Shrine. It's terrible yeah. at that. It's, it's so hard to remember. It, <laughs> it, don't forget, we haven't gotten to mention it yet. After this best of three, we will be having a special guest segment with Nader himself and wow. Zenith breaking down everything you see in this best three, of three. So you're getting two, a tournament two, and a VOD review all in right. one. Damn, is it sweet. So we've got this map, though, still here. Nepal and this best of three on this map already. And things heating up quickly. We saw purple sort of falter early on on point number one. Point number two, able to claim it. Really never see it back. And here comes point number three. So the trade of the Shield Wars continues here. Lots of pressure early on here from hour zero. They sort of have their foothold here as they move over to the top of the steps. Lamp comes out to try to regain a little bit of a position here. It's taken out. We're going to see Vega almost having window available already at 70% here. First point is going to already be taken by hour zero. And not, we'll finally see the first pick of the game here. Cupcake, Sinoid. Uh, wow. That's an ace. Just yeah, like uh, that. I mean, th this, this seems like a repeat of what we, we saw there on Village where Purple just play it very patiently. They set up how they want to. They don't. They aren't concerned about getting the first capture necessarily, but they want to get that that kind of dual angle set up where they're they're on both staircases, firing in at the point and, and kind of really put stress on the the double shields on the other side. So now things become pretty difficult for our zero. They've got to push in here. They've got the the Brigida, which can get aggressive, but as a hard HQ with that early close, pick, HQ with a very early pick on viral here. And so that's going to be huge. They lose a lot of DPS and really their flanker. They don't have much else that's going to go around and uh, force the action from a different angle here. So now Greg and Samaritan just have an opportunity to push up uncontested. They don't really have to watch for an off angle because if they do, I mean, they, it's not going to see Sinoid really looking for anything crazy here. So they're just going to go up on this underside and look for something. And now the duplicate coming in from HP up on the, the high ground with that Sigma trying to get the Gravitic Flux and probably not even gonna need it. No, we're gonna see it. He's still gonna burn it, it looks like. So maybe bit, oh, that's the Echo. Okay, that's so we see the Echo Gravitic Flux come out. It's very confusing to see on screen, as I'm sure most of you would agree. But so Greg still has his Gravitic Flux. HK has a chance to build theirs back and they're gonna cross 70% here. Yeah, I mean, this is the, the point when we were on Village where our Zero was able to kind of swing things back in their favor. They're going to, to have to do it Pretty much with, without a lot of tools here. They've only got the, the Bob in terms of ultimate ready to go, and they've already lost Jam! Yeah, Greg with the early pick once again. Greg on fire and unstoppable. With Train Cloud and Cupcake gonna follow in short order here. His Gravitic Flex is the one that finds Cupcake's Sinoid. Bob is gonna be taken out here. We're gonna see Viro swap with HK here, but that's probably not gonna be enough. Vega finds Sinoid here. It's gonna be prop most of a team just against Jam. Jam gets pulled, Jam gets taken down. The contest is gonna to have to start here on point here. Bob's gonna give the train cloud the beat down, but uh-oh, here comes our. They find three picks, able to begin to find something here. It looks like Beacon's just been enough of a distraction maybe to make things interesting, but they've gotta be able to keep touching point. Tracer comes out from Sinoid. A full stall comp is in order here with Jam and Cupcake going over to Lucio Moira. We've got Viral flying up. Taking out HK, but here comes Alexia with Samaritan with the push, and Purple puts it away. 
valiant effort there from our zero they kept that stall going for probably longer than they they really had a right to viral doing a lot in the back line to, to try and keep his team in it but it's just not enough at the end of the day purple in firm control there on trying they close it out on the paul to secure the the 1-0 lead put themselves on that point and you know where we're going to be seeing this, I think, throughout the qualifiers here today, winning map number one is going to be massive in terms of you know giving yourselves a leg up, giving yourself now two opportunities to close out the series. It's exactly what Purple are able to do, and you know now they're sitting pretty. They really are, and you talked about earlier too the uh, sort of the need to step up to the occasion when you're looking at a best of three. How do you regroup? And so a lot of times when I think of these. Um, when you lose that first one, part of me likes when the team loses the first map in a best of five or a best of seven, right? It keeps you humble. It forces you to be analytical to say, what did we do well? What didn't we do well? And how do we adjust? But in a best of three, you, you don't have that sort of time to be analytical, right? Like you just, what did we do well? What didn't we do well? Uh-oh, we just have to win the next two maps against an equally competent mm. team. That's not so easy. No, definitely not. Especially when you kind of look at the way those three maps went there on Nepal. I, I would say the the two that Purple won, they they were really from start to finish. They they had the setups that they wanted. They knew what their plan was for each of those points. the The only time they lost was on Village, which I would chalk up more to kind of the mistakes of Purple than I would necessarily any exceptional plays coming out from from our zero there. Uh, a, a little bit of disorganization cost them that first point, but they're able to bounce back. So now our zero, you really might need to, to start looking to kind of change things up dramatically as we move into map two. I have to agree. I think we saw some really undisciplined sloppy play there at the end of point one from purple. And I think, I think they found it. Like we, we saw the epitome of their patience on that last point, they lost point and they didn't panic. Like it was just like, okay, we're just going to buy time, buy time. And then before I could even call the first kill, it was an ace. And it was like, oh my God, like they've, they found it. Um, so that was, that was really brilliant. As we get ready here for map number two, thank you to all of our viewers here. Um, we're so happy to have you along with us. You're watching, as you we said at the top, we are watching the third impact Overwatch community showcase powered by third impact and Natter OW. We want to thank our sponsors again, Vite Ramen and Advanced.gg. Use coupon code IMPACT for 10 10% off your next order at either vendor. These are best of three rounds. We're watching 32 teams in eight groups of four, wither the way down to a single elim bracket tomorrow night, which will, me and Chai Guy will be back here for again. And then the main event next week, 16 teams, 12 invited and four making it out from tonight's festivities. So we'll be getting ready for map number two here in just a moment. Like we said, after this best of three, um, Netter and Zenith they're going to break down sort of what we saw here. They're going to do like a VOD review in the middle, of sort of everything, give you an idea of what you're watching and like, that, that's going to be really fun. So you're not going to want to go anywhere between games here. It's, it'll allow us to make sure all the players are ready and allow you guys to be ready too and kind of get a new perspective on some of these matches that you're seeing at this level. So we are going to get this one going here. It looks like we're going to be going to Havana here, Shy Guy. So what do you think we can expect other than – and do you expect, actually? I'm not going to I'm not gonna sway your decisions. Do you expect a full hold at spawn? <laughs> I mean, uh, that, that's kind of what you're asking for when you go here to, to Havana. That first point is so crucial for setting up a great defense. You don't necessarily have to to get that full hold, but nearly everybody is going to, to be trying to make use of that, that long initial part of the map where you've got these excellent sight lines. You can set up heroes, you know, picks like the, the Ash that we saw so much of there on Nepal, uh, even the Widowmaker becoming very, very viable when you've got that kind of distance to cover. Uh, so we'll, we'll just have to see if there there's any alternate shenanigans. I don't expect these teams to change up a lot uh, in terms of the compositions going into to Havana. It's going to be a lot of double shield uh, continuing forward uh, unless, you know, someone has something up there their sleeves here. And I'm curious to see what they do have in mind. We've seen, like we saw the other day during Grand Finals, we saw some sniper plays, which I'm kind of interested for. Ultimately, it's going to be playing a lot different once they get sort of this last part of the streets on point one. Uh, where they're going to have some opportunities either to open up a bit or be forced out of some bunker stuff that they might try. Um, but I think, and especially point number three, I mean, I don't, at this level of play, anything's possible, but I think 
that's going to really open up the game where we might see that ball again that we saw for a little bit, I believe from Beacon, and we could really see anything happening. It looks like we might see a hog, but a lot of snipers here out of the gate. Nothing yeah, I mean, the, the hog, if anything, is, is just going to be peeking out the front door looking for a cheeky hook to get that, that opening pick. I cannot imagine that they, they are going to run that, especially in conjunction with the Sigma. But over on the other side, Purple going to, to be sticking with exactly what worked. It's still that Ash Echo duo alongside the, the Orisa Sigma tank duo. So uh, we, we've really not swapped things up dramatically here at least for the defenders and why would you given how well map number one went for sure it looks like we're gonna see a little bit of a pause here it looks like we might have a brief disconnect here um, so we're gonna hang tight as we wait on what happens there but so honestly the other thing too with havana uh, it, it sort of always blows my mind the teams that just are such high skill level when they when they clash on a map like this you can still full hold them and spawn um and I don't know that these comps necessarily have the sustain to attempt something like that, but you can still really do something on that whole street. Yeah, for sure. Um, and as we we kind of head into to this attack now for, for hour zero, I'm really going to, to be looking at those two DPS. Viral and Sinoid have a lot on their shoulders here, especially if they walk out of spawn with that, that Hanzo Widow duo. You really have to, to be hitting your shots to, to find the value there because you're going to sacrifice a little bit in terms of the shield break by running the, the Widowmaker looking for those picks. Um, and just inherently, you you kind of have the the worst position at the, the start of this map. You do. And, th so the, and the other thing, we saw HK on the Echo in the last map. I wouldn't be surprised to see it again. And I want to see how Sinoid continues to deal with that. So we saw Sinoid pretty much locked in. I don't, I think Sinoid only swapped to the Tracer late when they had to off the Ash. I don't think he had really swapped before that. But I think if they can sort of limit the hero pool to what they have to do into an Echo, because I think Echo is still just so powerful even out the gate, that if HK is able to stay in a rhythm, that's going to be really hard to stop. Yeah, even with the, the kind of slight nerf or tune down that, that Echo just received uh, earlier this week, still an incredible power pick. The amount of mobility that you bring to the table and just kind of the 1v1 potential is off the charts with, with that hero. Uh, but it's a, it's a risk reward proposition, you know, especially when you're on that defense. If you step your your head out a little bit too far, it's very easy uh, to kind of get picked off in that situation, especially when you've got the widow and the the Hanzo on the opposite side who can delete you in an instant. And now we'll get to see how this all unfolds. The theory is out the window here. It's happening in practice. So we see double sniper here coming out here from ours. So they're gonna have. To look for some sort of pick here into a double shield going to be a difficult task but we'll see if they are up to it car's going to keep rolling up the street here for free it looks like we might see first first punch here around this corner indeed not a lot of poke really going down that that initial stretch of the map purple choosing to to hold back a bit further half the team on the the high ground now uh, going to be backing off a little bit as they they take some damage and joining the rest of the crew down around the the corner it looks like we're going to have another DC, so might be some server issues at this point. Might not even be uh, on the player side, so we, we apologize for the, the pauses here. But uh, in the meantime, we hadn't mentioned to this point, a special contest happening here at Third Impact for this tournament, Thick. I'm so, very excited. <laughs> all right, this this is fantastic here. So shout outs to Aqua. Many of you in the community know who Aqua is. Shout out to him for sponsoring this. He chipped in a hundred fifty dollar prize, which is fantastic. Um, so just reading the information here, announcing the third Impact Content Cup, we can feature your creativity. So whether that's art, cosplays, clips, videos, really dank memes, whatever you guys want to submit, um, the winner will be featured on the Overwatch Community Showcase stream. All you have to do is submit it to on Twitter to hashtag O C S Thick. You know how to spell thick. That's O C S Thick. You can find the rules on Third Impact's Twitter, um, so you can find more information there. I've got to think of something for that chat. I haven't had I haven't had time to just sit down and really put my brain to that. But there's got to be something I can do. I mean, yeah, the you know you could 
you know, write a song uh, about Overwatch, that would be pretty cool. Ooh, I Who think knows? we're onto something. We'll yeah. To, we'll, have to, we'll have to game plan that. Maybe we'll do a, right, a rap right battle now, or something. Right now we've got a game, and Samaritan is walking back from spawn after the, the disconnect. So Purple just having to give ground right now. They set up for the, the high ground kind of recontest, but still on the back foot. Yeah, that's a really good observation here. He's not available, so it's a six on five. It's like they got that sniper pick here. But again, we're seeing that beautiful patience. We still haven't lost anybody else in addition to that. And they're able to get the first kills on the board. Zeus and Vega able to find two cupcake and train clock. Gonna be going back to spawn the old fashioned way. Taking down here. Six on four action. And they're gonna head them send them back down the street. Yeah, and we're, we're seeing the, the power of kind of the Ash pick right now out from, from Zeus. All it takes is for the, the enemy team to kind of step one foot out of line and Zeus can take your head clean off uh, with that, that Viper shot. So now the, the recontest has been successful, but losing Vega is going to, to be a rough start for this next defense. It is, and he was really their old... He is their only ultimate coming into this fight. They'll be building up another one or two here soon, but he was going to play an integral part in this hole here. But here comes the double Orisa here. We'll see how they deal with HK's Orisa trying to dodge the dragon here. Very nimble there from the Echo. It's Orisa here. Bongo going to be taken out as well, but HK finds Jam. Cards moving, going to be contested here by Greg. So really nice positioning, able to last this long through the fight. Here comes the lamp and here comes the window. So Greg's got power. He's got backing behind him. So we see a little bit of a fight here. Gravitic Flux comes out. We'll see if it's able to land anybody inherently. It does, it finds Strain Cloud. Vega had taken out Cyanoid. HK going to go out by Cupcake. She's been popping on the Zen. Zeus finds the headshots on the beacon. Greg cleans it up. And that's another clean hold with under a minute and a half. And huge, huge props to Vega and Greg right there. It'd be so easy at that point when you are, are fighting like a 2v4, I believe it was, 2v3, to, to kind of back off or to, to just die on cart. But they drop their ult. They know the fight is winnable. They turn it around long enough for the, the team to get back. And now we're looking at a minute left on this attack. Yeah, they've got to make something happen quick. And Alexio makes something happen. Taking down Cupcake. So they're not going to have Trance here, which is going to be a really big problem because Zeus and Alexio themselves have ults available. They, we see a move up, sort of a fight on the high ground here. Interesting play. Looks like almost like a split offense at this point. Sinoid has a side angle, not even the lane again, but here comes Gravitic Flux. Sinoid finds HK. Gravitic Flux finds several. They're able to take out five. It looks like they're going to be able to move the car here. Samaritan's wiped out, and that's an ace. I mean, it, it feels like that that should not have worked from Trade Clown and Viral going on the, the flank there, but they, they just kind of brute forced their way in uh, through that stairwell. The Gravitic Flux is absolutely perfect from Trade Cloud. It cleans up three kills in that fight, and they, they move on through point A. So probably the, the hardest work here on Havana is done. And yeah, that split push I thought might be destined to failure, but they're able to pull out something with the siding. The siding had that first pick, and then the rest was easy peasy from there. Vega and HK, meanwhile, gonna be taken out easily here first part of this fight. Again, taking the high ground and sort of improving these fights, forcing Purple in some really awkward positions. They're able to find a few one on cards, so they're not gonna get it that far, but they've got the high ground. I mean, that's such a great. Ant Matrix there from Jam, not only does it, it secure them a couple of quick kills, but it completely invalidates Samaritan's uh, Supercharger. So the, the damage boost not really doing a whole lot for the defenders, but they're about to push out uh, with four, make that five ultimates on the board. And we'll see how many they have to burn here. They're getting started quick. Here comes the window. Dragons are gonna be unleashed into the window here. Not gonna fight, but able to fight two at the last second. Viral was able to clean it up, Cupcake. Find HK, car is still rolling, so they've got a huge advantage here. Three gonna be walking back from spawn just shortly here. Three on cart, and they might not be able to stall. We'll see. I think they would be Recontest best for can't content. happen here. I mean, they 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 mistimed the the immortality field a little bit. Thought it was gonna last longer than it did, and that was kind of the nail in the coffin for that point D, D defense. So now hour zero pushing forward aggressively. They've got some life in them here on Tambana. They're making the most. Ooh, look at that flux. Able to find several there. Sinoid able to stay alive thanks to the lamp. They would take it out just a little bit too late. HK gonna be taken out and swap with B-Can. So we got a five on five, but here come the mobs. And here comes another Gravitic Flux. Both teams hitting that Q key and hitting it hard. Alexio and both 
Sen taking out the Baj very quickly there. Samaritan and Greg though, finding their foothold. They've got something going here, I think. They might be able to stop the cart. Yeah, I mean, they, they trade their, their Echo for the opposite team's uh, Arissa, which is always going to, to be a good situation. Now the fight's still continuing though, because we're right at the attacker's spawn. Purple have to, to be perfect. Yeah, with two minutes left, anything they can do here to stall is basically a win, even if they ultimately lose the fight. Viral and Cupcake finding two. Cupcake has been lethal so far. She's not going to be denied. Some killers finds another, takes down Samaritan. She's got ultimate and she's got the cart rolling here for our zero. Train Cloud picks up HP and it looks like they'll at least get to the bridge. Indeed, that after a, a pretty slow start here on Havana, it has turned into quite the push now. Uh, four hour zero as they they surge forward, they're gonna have the trans to kind of keep getting aggressive, knowing they've got that healing in their back pocket. But for now, just gonna wait out the supercharge across the air. We'll see here how the rest of this plays. The Samaritan able to take out Train Cloud, maybe able to force a six on five that they can use to really stop car and push this under mid. Cupcake can be taken out. Six on four, a few more. That's effectively an ace, and they're gonna be able to back off, and next fight will be under a minute. Yeah, that's just brilliant right there. They they get the one individual pick and then they, they do not stop there, not you know, willing to, to just leave it at that. They continue pushing forward. That's gonna give them so much ult charge that they didn't have going into this next fight. Uh, so now uh, a real opportunity for this defense. We'll see what they're able to pull up with Cupcake finds Alexio. Really open things up. Alexio had the trance, and that was their only ultimate, so there's gonna be a lot of trouble here. Zeus taking out Cyanoid on the Widow, able to start landing some really nice shots. Viro taking out another few. This is a steamroll here, but Purple is gonna have O's coming back, and they're gonna have the final say in the final fight. I mean, that's a bad fight for Purple, not because they, they glossed it or they got beat convincingly, but they didn't get a lot out of our zero. They only got the, the dragons out from Viral, so now still a lot of tools for these attackers. Yeah, they've got a lot to throw there as we're seeing pretty much everything flying out. They've got Window and Lamp already out, so Lamp down for 30 seconds. That's going to be very important as we get into overtime here. We've got another Sigma, interestingly, on the high ground. Greg's going to use Gravig Flex. We're going to see another Gravitic Flex come out as well. Look at that combo. H key finds three, finds four. The Gravitic Flex frenzy takes them out and stops them short of getting three points. It's unfair. It's unfair. Fair, what they just did to our zero right there. The back to back Gravitic fluxes. And a lot of it is set up on the, the halts there of Samaritan. Not only does it kind of draw them together for that first flux, but it gives HK the damage he needs to get over that threshold, get the second one, the finisher as it were, and they close out. Uh, but still, not a bad attack here by any means for our zero. Right. And I have to I have to scale back a bit. My face over here when that happened, I was that that meme of like calculus in the mind, right? Because I was like, why would they gravitic flux? I'm like, wait, half health plus half health. Oh my god, that's their full health bar. Like it just like the the light bulb went off there, and like that's just such a brilliant play, right? I mean, Greg has been so good on the Sigma, the trust there from HP to go look. If you get a bunch of them and I get a bunch of them, good things happen. And what a what an exciting end of it. That was so well played. The patience that you talked about coming out there again with play the ultimate, play the what we've got, and then boom, they strike. And now I I've got my fingers crossed that, that this is real. I I'm I'm skeptical that Zeus is going to, to play the Bastion here on the attack, but it's definitely possible. I mean, it's not uh, out of the, the realm of possibility when it comes to these escort maps. No, going to go back to the Ash. Yeah, I think that's here. better. I think that's oh, better. I mean, it, it clearly is. Yeah, and especially a double shield and like, yeah, I, don't, I just don't think you would have gotten a ton of value, but I like, I like the meme if nothing else. It gives us something, a little bit of content here on the casting side. So we're gonna see the roll up the street here. Now, they just have to get it through to the end, and 93.91, it was pretty far into the third point, but it wasn't quite to the end. Like, it wasn't like just a hair off. Um, I don't have the exact measurement of the, the last part in front of me, but that's that's pretty far, but there's still room between the two and three spot there. But we're going to see the attack here. Purple is sort of mimicking what ultimately worked for our zero. They did this sort of split on the high ground. They do have looks like a nice three-on-three action, so they're going to split Ours here to fight from two different fronts, just the way they had done on attack, but nothing quite yet, no picks. 
Yeah, but they get the position. They've got Greg and Zeus up on this high ground now. It's gonna be Train Cloud and Viral pushing in to try and retake that position. Sino able to find that first pick, finds two. Train Cloud can be taken out by himself there. And we're gonna see that be a pretty much a clean ace here ultimately since Samaritan had already just spawned, so it's effectively an ace. Yeah, I mean, Sinoid doesn't have a ton to worry about when when he's just sitting up on this high ground deep in the, the back line. You know, HQ would have so much ground to try and cover to get up in his phase. Zeus can't really effectively take that duel as the, the Ash in that situation. So he's really a, a power player in this, this defense. So uh, continue to look towards Sinoid to, to see if uh, Hour Zero can make something. Oh, we'll see what they're able to do. Walls are off, so they have a little bit extra vision here on our zero side. It's able to use it to find Alexio. Take it out here. It's going to be a big disadvantage. Window comes out from Jam as well here. So they're going to invest a lot into this hold. And we're going to see it go under two minutes before this next attack with only Vegas window available here from Purple. And now almost definitely, I, I think Greg and uh, Zeus are going to be in a bit of trouble here, separated from the rest of the team, cut off and cut off at the knees is this attack there. They're just going to have to wait, regroup and try to push back in. But so far, they have had no success. Yeah, and we're gonna, I mean, I'm, time is sort of their worst enemy here, aside from the excellent hold they've been dealing with. They're gonna try a different map through the inside here, um, but ultimately they've gotta be watching the clock, seeing what they can do, but they find a pick on the side right here. Right on cue here, Lamp is at the perfect placement here. We're seeing Flux and a Bob coming out here. So a lot of exchanges here, Viral, Beacon, Train Cloud, all getting in on the action. They're gonna pick, round out the rest of Team Purple here. They've only got another charge or two to go. Yeah, I mean, that's just hour zero. They they realize they've lost the opening pick. So just, let, let's press Q. Uh, and, and Train Cloud, especially with that Gravitic Flux, is kind of the, the nail in the coffin. They can't push forward through that. They take a ton of damage, and you know, Purple will fall once again. So they've got one, maybe two opportunities here. Yeah, they're going to have to make them quick if they want to get that second one like you alluded to. Window and Lamp are out, but HK taken down. So that's going to set them way back. No DPS available here. I, it's Samaritan goes down. They're going to have to probably back off and maybe try something kind of cheeky here if they want to get this thing rolling. It's not looking good here for Purple. They will have the, the ult advantage when it comes to this final attempt here. They they finally can have bled our zero dry, although you know, you've still got the ant matrix, you've still got that that transcendence as well. So still very up in the air, but they've gotta find a way to get through this initial stage without losing anyone to train cloud or sinoid. Yeah, they've gotta find something here. Greg's gonna look for the gravitic flex on the high ground. Not able to land anybody, but HP cleans it up. We see another gravitic flex here coming out there looking for that same sort of action for the first time around and it's beginning nowhere. Look at it go. So Greg pushed up pretty far here. He's got this uh Discord orb on him right now, able to still maintain through it here. Lots of picks coming through as long as they don't see nine, they're gonna get first point. And ooh, that was that was awfully close, Shy Guy. I mean, that was uh, an excellent example of purple kind of seizing an opportunity there. They see Train Cloud is alone up on the high ground. They they say immediately, we can invest our Gravitic Flux, secure that kill for sure. No way for uh, the, the supports of our zero to stop that so they finally get the opening that they were looking for and they've given themselves some life here but they they cannot really afford more mistakes no they really can't here with the, and there's with just over excuse me two minutes to go they've got to make something happen samaritan's going to keep up on the high ground with vega bit of a split push here at this point dragon's going to come out though from viral samaritan just narrowly side dodging that well played H key sort of hitting everybody, turning left and right and shooting like it's, they're watching a tennis match here. Just back and forth on both sides of the offense. H key's gonna try to look for something from the underside. Nobody's died yet to this point, but Train Cloud's gonna be the first casualty of this fight here. Zeus is able to take down the lamp. H key and Zeus, though, taken out. No DPS available. They're likely gonna have to step back and regroup once this window goes down. Indeed they, they will, so that's going to mean a little bit of distance here for Purple as they, they push forward, but not quite the, the completion. That could be huge though. Cupcake getting picked off as they back around the corner means they're going to be shorthanded as they try to come in for the recontest. And that's going to be also doubly huge because Cupcake's not going to be around to try to build up that trans while Alexio 
has his available to Cupcake, she's gonna have to be at a bit of a disadvantage when she arrives. Viro taken down as well, so regardless of Cupcake coming back, that's still a six on five action here. I think they're gonna definitely have to look for a recontest, but they decide better of it. They're gonna give it up and, and they're gonna move right through at the third point. Yeah, I mean, they say that we have the, the time make advantage and we, we believe in our point C defense, but that could come back to bite them. Great lamps, beautiful play there into one curve flex. Here comes the answering one though. Another no lamp available, but they're still able to get through it here. Alexio also using the transcendence to help out with the healing here. So it's a six on six fight. They're gonna sort of just hug the backside there of those canisters. Just sort of wait for everything to happen. Jam and cupcake have looks available. So I wouldn't be surprised to see that window pop here shortly, but Vega's got a couple of too. A lot of ultimates about to be unleashed. The, the duplicate onto the Arissa uh, for H key. Now we'll, we'll see if they can get another supercharger out. Yeah, I was waiting to see another double for big flush combo here, but nothing quite now. Bob coming out here from Zeus. Alexio fights two, fights three along with H key. It's just like that. Sinoid's gonna jump off and give them the ace. They're gonna get the cart rolling here to the bridge. It kind of works there for, for HQ. Copying the, the Orisa gets another shield in play, eventually gets up to, to that supercharger, so they just chained that entire fight. They had supercharger backing them up, so they, they're able to push through with that. And now it's going to be a relatively dry fight coming into the tail end of point C. Vega and Viral, the only one with ultimate. So we're going to see here if they're able to do anything with the dragons. Nothing from it yet. We see window is available online. HK taken out though, so they're gonna be short a DPS and short it off angle here. Vega goes down next to Cyanoid. And the thing, if they go for a reposition here, I mean, Cyanoid and Viral just have open range. It's open season for them. Yeah, Samaritan just having to, to dive off the map. Now Greg could potentially be in a little bit of trouble here. Will have some support from the team eventually as he's stuck up underneath the bridge. Now wrapping back around, but this is going to, to be a lot on his shoulders. That Gravitic Flux, the one big tool here for Purple if they're there looking to secure kills. But first and foremost, they've got to avoid Sinoid. They cannot afford to have anybody picked off. Yeah, they've got to keep that cart active first here as well. HQ immediately taken down. Alexia does have that transcendence here. So they're going to have to be really strategic how they use that. Meanwhile, Jam's got that window online. Gravitic Flux is going to fly through, but it's going to take anybody out. Not quite. Lamp well played and well played there. Greg didn't clear it out along with Cupcake. Viral finds the pick on his Samaritan. You're seeing those sniper shots coming out from Sinoid, but they're not going to be enough. Snipe. Sinoid and Viral take it out. Zeus will be taken down as well. Train Cloud takes himself out there with his own punches there and ultimately 1.42 meters to go can they eke it out and they do wow beautiful that was, that was about as close as a final fight can really get yes there were three members of purple there remaining at the the tail end but that could have just as easily gone the the opposite way our zero putting up a strong effort here, but they fall 2-0 in the, the first map of our tournament. Yeah, and I mean, Purple really sort of fought through the trenches, right? I mean, we saw them like go through sort of hell and back. They they were really down early on, sort of on every point there. Their backs were up against the wall on that first point right here in Havana. I mean, I, I had my doubts. I'm sure you did as well, but man, Greg just looked fantastic, right? Unreal. And I I want to throw this out there. They they made a really intelligent swap there at the, the very tail end over to the, the wrecking ball to try and get a little bit of harassment onto to Sinoid and onto that back line of our zero. Just prevent them from having free reign to, to fire from long range. Uh, they, they eventually are able to, to kind of harass them down and pick up that kill. So... Uh, big kind of clutch swaps coming through from purple as they they show off uh, you know why they they are you know here to play why they are probably one of the the favorites to eventually make it out of this group stage they're off to a great start here yeah they have to be absolutely thrilled going into their next match knowing hey we've not only did we win but we proved ourselves what happens when things get, when the chips are down how we're going to turn it around they know they can do it here so we're going to pass the baton over to natter and zenith here and they're going to break down what we just saw in that match and then myself and shy guy will be back with you for the next match in just a little bit don't go anywhere we'll be right back
turn toward me and look so weak. I've never seen you with such tired eyes. And everything we said we'd be, we just traded for a suit coat and a tie. Socks and shoes right off. That natural light is so damn polite, can make you feel just like you were young again. Standing underneath the rows of trees. Toward me and look so weak. I've never seen you with such tired eyes. And everything we said we'd be, we just traded for a suit coat and a tie. Um, so Zenith and I will be doing a sort of educational session talk on both these teams that we saw. We saw Purple versus uh, Hour Zero. Um, we're going to be, we'll talk a little bit about introductions on us both. And I think the topic we really want to go into is sort of like neutral fights on the Koth. And um, yeah, so Zenith, you want to give a brief introduction on yourself? Uh, I'm by Zenith. Uh, I'm the head coach of Third Impact. Uh, we just finished second place in North American Contenders. So yay for us. Um, I don't know. That's it, I guess. <laughs> and you are Force yeah, Natter. Uh, yeah, I'm Natter. Uh, I'm a strategic coach for Third Impact. Um, we also, yeah, us being on the same team, we finished in second place um, mm -hmm. in playoffs. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying uh, the, the amazing tourney. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to jump straight into the analysis. Uh, and we're going to go really in depth on sort of the first fights or neutral fights on all the cough maps or rounds. And we'll sort of talk about it, like what happened, what went wrong, what went right. And yeah, let's jump straight into it. Okay, so first uh, we're, we're going to start with Nepal Village. 
we're sort of started right away here. Let's play it out a bit. Okay, so here we can see both teams sort of running out on different compositions. We see blue team, our our zero, looking to go for more of a brawl based composition, and we can see red team going for more of a spam based composition. What are your initial thoughts on this zenith? Like, what what do you think like is considered meta on this map? What do you think is strong? What are your thoughts? Towards the end of Contenders, everyone was running what Hour Zero was running, or something similar to it. Uh, a lot of it was Symmetra and point control stuff. Um, yeah. Although Spam is very good composition in the, on this map, for sure. Uh, like, most people favored the Sim. Uh, we actually favored the Spam with a Sim, because it was just the hybrid of the two. Makes it easier. Um, but both teams have very different win conditions here, which makes it challenging. So mostly um, our zero's challenge is like, how do I stay on point and not get picked off from all the angles? And then purple's objective is, how do I take all the angles and pick someone off? Yeah. So it makes it challenging on this point particularly because there is two doors and it's very enclosed in like a tight part of the map. So I think one of the things that I like to say also is like our zero's composition is incredibly strong when they have point control. So if they win the first fight, like, and they play it well, um, like they should really be able to win the round because it's honestly incredibly frustrating to try and deal with the sim comp and try and recontest. So let's sort of go through this first fight and sort of see what happens. All right, so we got our zero goes straight to point. They're already on point first. They're setting up the sim tally. Uh, purple's looking to go forward. They look like they're trying to take some angles here. Let's get a better POV here. Going forward, going forward. Okay, so here's the first thing that I sort of want to talk about, right? Where we sort of see... Uh, H key, sort of taking it a direct off angle here. And to me, this is interesting. Um, I, I'm all about like, we in third impact, we talk a lot about points of aggression and sort of like how you can like mess with enemies focus and whatnot. But to me, when you go for like this type of play, it's really important that the echo doesn't set aggression first. I I'm all about like, you know, maybe having the Arissa or someone else sort of bait aggression. So the echo can come in later and then get kills. Uh, what what are you thinking so far, Zenith, on this? A lot of a lot of what a lot of how you can beat people with angles in this game on a composition like playing against a composition that's very like stuck in their way of I need to be together as six. The sim comp has to be together as six, they can't move. They're they're stuck together. When I find that the easiest way to do it is to have like at least three angles. So here it's the Echo, the Sig and Zen, and then the, the Arisa Bap and Ash is kind of off on her own or whatever. Um but those angles make it really hard for a, a group of six to deal with because naturally like it's it's hard to deal with uh, aggression as it comes towards you so if it comes from three different spots if six people aren't looking at the same person at the same time then they die from one other side so in the comp where like in a brawl comp you have to kind of be front towards enemy and if any one of your teammates are not front towards enemy it becomes drastically harder but i think these angles are great yeah it's just it's just a matter of time now is, is to does the point unlock did they cap it or can they get a pick Something I want to point out here is immediately Jam's actually recognizing that, you know, H key on the Echo is actually flanking and he's immediately looking to deny him, which is a good play by him for sure. So they like, keep going, right? The fight keeps going on. The enemy Echo sort of gets forced out. They're spamming Samaritan super low on the right side, forced to gold actually. And Zeus gets a pick on Train Cloud and they cap. So now this is an interesting situation, right? Because now our Zero has one tank, one shield, and this is like a ma so this is what I like to call like a trigger, right? Like this is where like red team should be like, oh man, we got a pick. We you know we got two shields, right? They only have one shield. If we keep pushing hard, like we're gonna be able to win this. So let's sort of see what happens here. Okay, they wall, so like, there's the wall to stabilize, right? Like, I think I think we've all seen that before. Yeah. yeah. But it's interesting, so, they stacked, though. They stacked the wall and the drone. What, what, what it's, are you... it's more panic, in my opinion. Yeah. When you're 5v6 and you're playing a composition that favors really close quarters combat, and a, and a composition that's playing really far range is, like, pounding into you, it's challenging. So, aside from being composed and stuff, uh, like, you could have used your drone to save the Ryan earlier, potentially. And then you could wall to stall some time, a little bit extra time, regroup, get your health pools back, then pop out with window. It's like same thing with coalescence. If you need to farm it as fast as possible against the comp you don't win into in order to get value, like somewhere in the middle of the fight. You can play it out from here, I think. Yeah, once I was fixing happens. one problem, I think that should have happened. Okay, it should be good now. That is my fault. There we go. Okay. 
so yeah, so now we see what happens here. They're pushing in, they're pushing aggro. They lamp second, right? Always about like forcing the enemy team's CDs first, then pushing with your own CDs aggressive. And now you see that this team just looks to push forward and caps, right? So I think the biggest thing that really we, we got we to gotta understand here is that blue team, first of all, got picked. They forced out the sim, right? Then they stacked their CDs too early. And one thing I do have to commend red, uh, like, uh, purple on is like they weren't together right like they, they were like like you said they're taking multiple angles right yeah. like their, their tanks one tank was here i believe one tank was there their zen was playing over here right they're in a position so it's like really really hard for our zero to actually like try and like like actually deal with that right yeah, so you can't run on anyone yeah or exactly TP on anyone for that matter it's hard. yeah definitely the retake oh, here was interesting though from when i when i watched they swap off of sim and they go ash yeah and there's a few things that that go into that decision. I think it's an okay swap. I don't think it's incredible because this map is really tight in close quarters. But naturally, you want to think like when you're countering the enemy team. Now it's like first fight's over. Can't take that back. What are we gonna do from here on out? Right. So yeah. the next decision you make it could turn the rest of the, the of the cough round. So if you decide, okay, I gotta swap now. I gotta go right before they like swap right before they can make a decision, and we can come in with a better comp. Then you go for that. Right. And so the Ash to me is potentially a good play, but you're still playing really close quarters tanks in, in like with a Lucio and Orion specifically, to where you don't really want to have an Ash, I guess, because there's a lot of corners. It's hard to get out. If you don't have a lot of space, the Ash becomes an issue. But we can go, go to the next fight because it, it was really interesting to yeah. see like from the spam angle, like how you play against Brawl is obviously range. So when they were coming at, when, um, when, uh, our zero was coming out of the chokes and stuff against purple. They couldn't clear them because it was too far still. Absolutely. Well, we'll so in my opinion, this. I think I think there could be could have been a different swap to like play more close if you're gonna keep like the May or you're gonna keep like the Ryan Lucio. Right. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's see here. So they like to go through kitchen, which is an interesting choice, right? Because you go through kitchen that LOS for like ashes, right? Like not really the best and Sinoid sort of gets a little split here they get halted force lamp really early and obviously you know we talk about a neutral fight so important in Koth you win neutral fight you're probably going to win the next few fights just because of alt advantage and that's sort of what's happening here we look at this fight and it's, it's just alt advantage right like it's pretty hard I, we, we, yeah what about like a reaper really like extent. like I, I feel like a reaper would have been a pretty decent swap to some extent teleport and backline force lamp, lamp early I mean, I don't see the I don't see the reason why we need to swap off sim right away. You're like yeah. six ish, sixty ish to wall. You yeah. TP on a point. Yeah. If if purple's not sitting on point, then that you cap it for free almost, and then you could play the backside by barn. Yep. And then you can right hide. Yeah. You you TP back there. Say you cap point like from right from that position. Then you just back up to where your TP was. Yeah. And then from there you're safe. There's walls. There's cover. You can hide in there. And then now you're forcing the spam team to come into your domain. You have to come brawl with us now. Absolutely, absolutely. I think it's definitely an, an option. Oh, I sort of want to move on to the next round here and sort of look at the next round, sort of how the neutral fight sort of played out. Let's see if I can get yeah. there. And, and, and I can segue that from it, from from what we're watching here about like how, how comps beat certain comps and stuff and how you want to be fighting. This is also important. The neutral fight here is really important. And you'll see, you'll see uh, I think it's the, the blue team or whatever, uh, our zero, they hesitate a little bit with taking space towards the middle pillars. So the Orisa ends up playing the back corner, which is fine. You're playing a Zen comp, you want to play corners. So that's an option th that you have. But at the same time, you need to be thinking about what does your opponent want? Right. right. What do they want you to do, and what do you want to do? That's the that's that's the main thing when it comes to anything in the neutral fight, or even in any map. Like, how do you fight in a space where you, you want to be fighting, and the enemy team does not want to be oh. fighting? Yep. Right. Absolutely. And like, I mean, that's yeah. the biggest thing, right? Like, when they look to retake there, they were going in a place that's more open, right? Which is going to definitely favor spam comp, right? Like, they're a brawl base, yeah. and obviously, brawl always wants to close distance, and if they force point, it's just going to be a lot better for them. All right. So let's yeah. sort of look at this map, this round here. Let's see. So now again, we're sort of looking at purple. They look to be going for they're they're in the TP to get there faster. But it looks like they're going for spam base variation comp, and they're they're both going for spam. We just got a difference of Torb versus Echo. Okay. So immediately, my thoughts on this are like, okay, Torb is great for countering flankers. Torb can off angle, but not really. Torb alts and nuts. But Echo in this map with it being so enclosed 
can be a bit more difficult like when i think about angles of echo could play like if you play like over here sure it's not that bad it's really rough right like the hit scan can see you so when i look at this map like i immediately like think of lanes and it's sort of a way we sort of talk about maps right like the center lane being like here the right lane being there and then sort of the outside lane you can even like say whoops oh, this being the center lane this sort of being the right lane and this being this being a left lane man center lane this being the right lane right so yeah <laughs> all right so um like I echo can look to flank and go those sides right whereas like viral on the torb should be looking to like play core with the core and sort of look to push more aggressive so i'd expect here to see our zero look to like push really aggressive into the blue team as soon as they realize the enemy team's got echo what are your thoughts and stuff on this yeah it's 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 challenging because a lot of the the thing I'll say about this map is, yes, it's enclosed, but at the same time, the flank routes from the left and the right lane are, you can't really see them. Yeah. So it's very hidden. If you execute them correctly, it's very hidden. And I think, actually, the team that did it the best for contenders was actually Doge. Whenever yeah, we they did. Them, yeah, yeah. Kevster, like Kevster would, <laughs> can't come around. Well, you, you can draw the flank. <laughs> Kevster would literally play Mega Side outside, and he would boost all the way across from there, and he would play behind us, which is a great play if you don't expect it coming, right? So... The red team's like for sure going for that. Should be going for a play like that, especially when, like, you you can't really flank any other way. If you flank the right side, they can see you coming. Yeah. Right. Left side, you can't see it coming. So the torb adds, in my opinion, it's like stability where we played it for tracer mostly and yep. like to deny like a, a well round <laughs> uh, like a, I guess a well rounded um, amount of comps and stuff like that. But for torb, the moment you realize they have echo. And their their um, value is very periodical. Like we gotta go, like go in, walk, like walk forward, take space. You can't be sitting there. Yep, absolutely. Like sitting, there, sitting there and letting them surround you is what they want, right? Red team wants the surround. They want the echo to be behind as much as possible. They want the sigma and the off angle potentially with the ash, or yep. and they want the supports running running it down with the Arisa. That's what they want. So if blue team doesn't fan out and take space aggressively before that happens, then they're playing right into yeah. their hand. Yeah, she got to push really hard. So let's sort, of, yeah. let's sort of watch this, sort of how this plays out. So red team shields first, right? That's actually really bad. Blue team has a shield advantage straight off the bat, right? Huge halt. You can see Beacon Bower's a little bit far back. Their Sigma is pushing up. Okay, it's sort of going even. Right over here, you see the enemy. I'm trying to get a better angle here. You can see... Their Echo's already taking that sort of off angle we talked about. He's not really going on any wide flank really right now, but he's sort of just taking an off angle, trying to pepper the team. And Train Cloud's got a lot more space right now than Greg, it seems like. Again, shields are up. Yeah. But like the, big, the biggest problem here I want to really mention, and it's something that's pretty obvious, the distance for this shield and this shield, like you can see their core is up way more than like Purple's core is just up more. And like our Zero's core is way back. And mm -hmm. it... The thing is, to me, like, when th both these comps have no speed, so you actually really need to take into account, like, the distance they have, so that when they actually want to push, they're able to get on the people fast. So even though this this distance isn't doesn't seem like that much, if if you're starting here and you see, like, oh, they use drone or whatnot, and you, you have drone, right, you can close that distance incredibly fast, right, because you're closer. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's, for what I'm seeing, you could start your first shield could be where train should be where train yeah. was because that's still a corner. If you go by those stairs, it's a corner you can drone. Yep. It, you don't need to do the back right corner. And then from there, instead of shielding forward to where train cut is like right now, like from the shield you're at right here, you can go into pillars and then you can have control of that. Then then any any flank com coming from point is going to be non-existent because you can poke it out. There's no cover for them. Yep. So like yep. you can start there just fine. And on the the the, the right the right hand drawing of that shield where train cut is, that's a drone spot. You should be okay there. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And then you can take aggressive angling because if you go back like five seconds, you can see our red team was actually like not positioning like super close. Yeah. Red, team, red team actually uh, started further, farther back. Right. So like if they're gonna give you that much like leeway and that much space, then you can just take it from them. Yeah, so like right over here, like you see, like and you, like the biggest thing here, right, is reds again. They shielded first, they got back first. You can see how Samaritan's really far, very back. far back. Too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So and... in this situation, we have Torb. Let's like Torb to me is this, and I think I, I'm gonna use a sword analogy. And Torb <laughs> is like, no, oh, okay. Torb is like it's a mix of Cree and a mix of Reaper. Yeah. So if it's Reaper and you're playing against another like snipers and stuff like that, then walk it down and yeah. start shooting. Right click, right click, right click into shield, into tanks and stuff. Brawl. Those people Start will die. Yeah. Right. You could place. You could place turret. If turret's gonna be useless in this comp, which it kind of is. It's, yeah, it is. It's not gonna deny a flank. If turret's gonna be useless, throw a turret down where your shield is. Put shields down. Stack shields. Throw your turret down and walk forward. Yeah. Out, like. It's mouse two, right? Mouse two. <laughs> Fresh red shield. All right. Let's sort of see what happens here and plays out. So. 
Going for shields, going for shields. There's big dynamite actually. Both teams are sort of just duking it out. I sort of want to see Trangout gets really low. Torb Turk gets dead. We see H key sort of over here, sort of just peppering from the right side. So this is the thing I really want to talk about. Their lamp gets forced really early. Like, well, not really early, but a decent, like, it's before Blues teams, right? Or, pretty early. Yeah, it is pretty yeah. early. So, but the thing is here, like, like they're, they're not pushing. Like, they're, they're so far back. In fact, the matter of the thing is they've even fell back. Right? Like, Train Cloud had to back, back off fine, right? But the thing is, now now for them to aggress, it's even harder, right? They weren't really able to maintain that space. They weren't playing that drone spot that you talked about. And now since they're so far away, right? Closing distance at that distance from, like, here all the way to here is pretty rough. And then they got picked as well. And now, like, if you look at this, this is honestly looking pretty advantageous for them. It, like, it's looking pretty, pretty, pretty advantageous for Purple. Yeah. And this then, happened a few times, really. Yes, it did during the series. Not, not just this map, but on Havana too. We, I know we don't have time to go into that, but for the yeah. sake of for the sake of time, uh, I talk a lot on Third Impact about what there's three different types of cooldown trades. There's neutral cooldown trades. There's positive new, uh, cooldown trades, and there's negative cooldown trades. So the neutral ones is like we shield, they shield. They they grasp, we grasp. We, they drone, we drone. Or that's like you're not getting any value. Okay, like negative cooldown trades is the other team drones first. We're full HP, we can walk forward, let's push them. They have to use a drone to survive, right? So let's go push our advantage. They're using a cooldown in a negative in a negative situation, right? Now, on the other, other side of that is it, there's positive cooldown trades where, for example, I say we want to like pull first and try to force drone right away. So let's say pull dynamite happens and you force a drone, right? You made a positive cooldown trade where your cooldowns are going forward, actively doing something, and they're actively on the back foot trying to counter. Yeah, right. absolutely. So in these situations, when it's a neutral fight and you're going to take a bunch of neutral cooldown trades, you want to think about not just the cooldowns that you're trading, but the map, right? What, how much of the map am I taking away from them, right? Do I, am I playing to my advantage or am I playing to their advantage, right? What do they want to do? What do we want to do? Right, and, that, and that's all it comes down to in neutral fights. Even on Havana uh, and uh, other maps like that too, it's like what do we want and what, do, what, don't, what don't we want them to have, right? And a lot of teams don't think like that. They think, okay, if I play our game perfectly, our cooldown rotations in our corners, then we'll be fine. But that's, that's, that's great up until a certain point when the other team plays just as perfect as you. And yeah. then now you need to think, how am I going to beat them? How am I going to consistently like, get more value over them? I know yeah. we're running out of time, but yeah. <laughs> All right, so like, if you, as this fight sort of digresses, right? Like, uh, you can sort of see here that like the, the biggest, my biggest problem is like this: the, how HK goes aggro like this. This is a huge problem, right? Like, like he's able to like go really wide on that angle, and like normally this would be throwing, right? Like it'd be complete throwing. He's in open space, like a hit scan would just kill him, is, but yeah. right? Yeah, but th exactly, right? It's not. It's because the fact now they're aggressing together, right? Because they're pushing together, and they're like, you know, the core is taking aggression, right? Like this is like saying a really, really, really strong off angle, and the timing in which he aggressed from like here to here, and how the core pushed with him was like done pretty well. Right, and now, now what happens? The lamp comes out, and now all of a sudden, our zero is like very reactive, right? Samaritan's one HP though, but they're really Drones reactive. One. Drones going down. Yeah, he bombs everyone. Yep. They're all one HP. The laser comes out. Yep. It's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. Yeah. Gecko's a wonderful hero. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Love it. And then they square get square. Jam died for Jam died and majority healer. So that's sort of looking, yeah. So I think in terms of time, we'll probably end the analysis here. I know we have another like educational sort of talk later in the stream broadcast, and we'll definitely yeah. maybe talk about a different concept instead of neutral fights there. Maybe we'll talk the about some, match. yeah, yeah, the third match, which I'm looking forward to. I think it'll be good. Uh, let's sort of take it back to like an overview of the series, and we'll sort of talk a little bit about an overview and sort of what happened. Um, does that sound good? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think for me, a lot of, a lot of it was who had more control of the spaces that they wanted. Like, if you, for Havana, uh, first point defense, when our zero almost full held, um, they didn't really have control of top left, but they had the control of the corner that they want, trying to take yeah. every high ground that didn't need to be cleared. It was, it was, they, their front line got destroyed. Or vice versa, if they, if their front line was playing slow and they went to go clear an angle, and there's actually people up there, then they got forced out, right? And it, on the flip side, too, uh, our zero struggled with being able to force off that high ground, uh, even though they got, like, really close to the end of first, 
they just didn't clear the high grounds enough in order to get themselves value. Which, in, against the spam team, like for teams that are playing for the rest of the day, like just clear angles and clear high grounds, and you'll win. I promise you. Yep. Just take your time. It, you can it, four minutes is it seems like not a lot of time, but four minutes is a lot of time to do stuff, right? Yeah. So if you take an extra twenty seconds to look at something and force it out, then go ahead, right? If it makes it easier for you to win to get to your win condition and for them not to get to theirs, right? That's yeah. that's basically how the series came down for me. No, I agree. I think like a lot of it was. The team, one team would take a shit ton of space, and then they forget to clear an off angle. And then the question is: Is their core that is not clear in the off angle? Are they gonna like get too much? Are they, are they stacking shields? Are they just gonna rip through the enemy team, right? Or and because they didn't clear the off angle, is the enemy team gonna let that happen? Or is that enemy yeah. team gonna get value out of the off angle, right? Yeah. So, all right. So thanks, guys. Um, I'm looking forward to coming back again. Uh, Zenith and I will be back mm -hmm. later uh, after the third match. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying um, the broadcast so far. Uh, we'll take it away. We'll, uh, I'll, we'll give it back to Shy Guy and Paul. Thank you so much, guys. See you guys later. Yep. Peace. You turned toward me and looked so weak. I've never seen you with such tired eyes. And everything we said we'd be We just traded for a suit coat and a tie Run underneath the rose of trees And we'll see you where the ocean meets the sky Under your toes, fire grows You are ready for a different kind of life Take your socks and shoes right off That natural light Is so damn polite Can make you feel just like you were young Welcome back to the Overwatch Community Showcase Here powered by 3rd Impact and Natter OW I am Paul, joined alongside Shy Guy And we're happy to have you back And we say thank you to Natter and Zena For that awesome bot review Between matches here Really loving that format here. And Shy Guys, we're getting ready to set up here for our next match between Savages 5.0 and Kratos. Let's take a look at this bracket here for a hot second. And we've got a lot of scores rolling in here. What do you think? No, I mean, we, we are starting to, to get our first results. A couple of teams have already finished their, their second games as well. Of course, we, we just saw the, the excellent match between Purple and Hour Zero down there in Group G. Up next, where we're headed over to Group H. Uh, for a, a battle of the top two teams there as Savages 5.0 going to take on Kratos. But just looking around, we, we've got you know so, some early teams jumping out to, to 2-0 leads in the group. Rats in Group B, Region up there in Group D, uh, and then Underwater as well down in Group E. So a lot of teams already kind of putting themselves in position to come out on top of their groups if they can finish off one more game. Absolutely. And as we're getting ready here to load into our mattress here, we want to take a second to thank our sponsors of this awesome event. Um, and so our one of our sponsors here is Advanced.gg, um, and they make incredible gaming supplements. They're a company with a mission to produce only innovative products that do exactly as advertised. So you can buy from Advanced.gg with, impact, with code IMPACT for 10% off your purchase. But boy, howdy, I am hungry. If only I could eat something that is easy to make and extremely healthy. Could it be Vite Ramen? Impact is the code there too for 10% off your next order. That is Vite Ramen. So thank you, Vite Ramen. They are a consistent sponsor here with Third Impact. So thank you for their continued support and for advanced that GG support. So we're going to be getting ready here for our second match here on stream. We're going to be on Lijong Tower here. And as we sort of begin to look at both teams here, as we're going to give them the okay in just a second, Chai Guy, what sort of variety do you think we might see here? 
you know, it's it's hard to say exactly. I mean, Lijong Tower opens the door up for for a lot of stuff that I don't think we have seen thus far in the the tournament. I mean, in that that last match, it was pretty much stock standard. We were running the the double shields nearly all the time, unless someone needed a last second wrecking ball or, or something of that ilk. But you know, as we we head over to Lijong, especially as you you look at a map like Gardens. There's a lot of opportunity for different styles. You know, the dive can really be very effective. We see it quite often at the highest level on that map in particular. So we we might see things open up a little bit in terms of the, the hero picks here. For sure. And we're also getting mentioned that we have a giveaway going on right now. So if you hit exclamation point giveaway in chat you will be entered for a chance to win a $20 gift card to advance.gg I believe they'll be going on for at least the next 10 minutes so even with the stream delay you aren't going to be too far behind make sure you enter that with now exclamation point giveaway we'll be doing that one more time I believe today if not more tomorrow so we're loading here into our first point of Lijiang Tower both teams in their brackets so far are undefeated in group h so this is really gonna matter ultimately who's gonna get that 2-0 start and have the the inside lane here for the finish yeah for sure i mean if, if you can come away with the win here you, you then you have your destiny in your own hands which is always what you are looking for in this kind of group stage situation you don't want to have to be relying on results of other matches to, to get you over the finish line so this one's going to be very pivotal here uh, as we head into this group h matchup i'm insanely excited for this just looking at the names that we've got on both sides the talent in this game is absolutely unreal like savages just seems like such a stacked team in my Yeah, we're gonna be curious to see if Savages, to our knowledge, isn't it exactly an organized team, but rather a really good set of players that have played together and really want to be part of this. So can the sum of the parts be as good, if not better, than the parts individually? We're about to find out here. Two totally different comps as we load in to get ready for this first hold here. We're gonna see already Ace of Spades and his crew set up on point immediately. And we're Vita and Crow, we're going to have to find a way in here early on. Yeah, we'll see if the dive can find the angles that they're looking for. So far, right now, Savage is just giving a lot of space. Yeah, they're going to have to give up a lot indeed. And 2 s though, finding the first kill here. So they're going to be have that early pick on the Zen. Going to give them a lot of trouble. Derek going to be taken down next. So 5 on 5 continues. And 2 s though, has been stopped. Crow, we going to put an end to that there. So 4 on 4, even match picks back and forth. We're going to see them able to cap here for for how long Gunther moving in, able to get into the back line, ends up being picked off. Maxwell just continues to get a lot of different varieties as far as picks and angles, moving in on Ace of Spades, find him, find Guru here, and it looks like we're gonna see a retake in just a second. Yeah, and after the, the two DPS on the, the side of Savages went down in that fight, there was absolutely no one to check default. He just sat at the front entrance free firing on the ash already up to 86 percent on that that bob you see the damage that he's putting down dynamites just with the the regular shots as well uh and you know kratos able to come away with a, a nice open fight yeah and i like the difference in tanks here so we're really watching a battle with shield versus dive for the classic match of overwatch that's you at okay take down haruki here he's gonna put Ultimately gonna put Kratos in a difficult spot again, fighting without one of support. The ball can be taken down next, setting up a nice six on four here. Ace of Spades looking to get involved as well, finds a kill on the Gunther. Crowey taken down next, that's gonna be a clean sweep to get back point. Indeed it will be, and now, you know, we're, we're gonna start seeing kind of the first ultimates coming online here. We had Maxwell with Ooh, that Haru. duplicate in the last fight. Yeah, he keeps getting caught out here. Yeah, he's getting uh, sort of in a world of pain here just can't seem to get the rhythm just yet here we'll see if maybe a, more of a comfort swap coming or something um, try to change his luck just a little bit a lot of ultimates about to, to come on for savages here they they are going to, to be big but got the rally and the bob to deal with right now yeah bob looking to move in they're able to find a pick finally on the Derek vita with the melee here commonly with Haruhi, so maybe Haruhi finally finding a rhythm. Haruhi taking out Momo, and they're finally getting on the board here. Six on four fight. Ace of Spades gonna pin Crowley. Not gonna go do anything. Deep bomb shield is broken at the last second. They're able to take him out with the bomb. Fish kick goes back to spawn next here. 
and it's gonna be the back and forth continues on point. It's gonna reset in favor of Kratos. It was a nice shatter from Ace of Spades trying to turn that fight back around for his team, but there just wasn't any follow up. The trans was able to come through from Harubi after he gets up and the, the fight turns in their direction, but now we've got the Rika test. It's Derek looking for a high noon behind the shield, doesn't find anything quite yet here. But Crawley knocked off by Fish Kick there, didn't have the ability to jetpack. N2S gonna go for the die, die, die. gets stunned immediately, I'm assuming, by Gunther's shield bash, but we didn't quite see if he just gonna knock Derek off. N2S, despite losing the ultimate, able to pick up Haruhi there. Default and Gunther, though, so far getting the better of the trade. Default finds two, they're gonna rally. Probably didn't need to, but that's just. I, it doesn't get any closer than that on a recon test. They're going to be able to keep it. And so far, this map has just kind of seemed like a case study in the strength of Brigida as a pick right now. Gunther able to stay in all of these fights, continue the brawl, even when the he loses teammates. So, so far, working out wonderfully for Kratos. Yeah, they have to be happy with the back and forth so far. Ultimately, so far, playing mostly in their favor, despite Haruhi having a bit of a slow start. So Maxwell Momo will be the first one down. Ace of Spades will be taken out next, so and go Guru follows up. And just like that, Kratos able to eke out first point. Yeah, and there we we might see a, a symptom of kind of the, the pug-style team that is Savages. They, they are a little bit scattered coming into that final fight. No one getting there with the, the touch to keep the overtime going and Kratos come away with the first win and now we head over to Gardens where that dive comp I think is only going to get stronger. Yeah, I think the other thing playing to the strength here of Kratos is they're not trying to match shields, right? They're, they're going with a dive and if they're able to coordinate that well against a team that's more of a pug team, they're going to have a really hard time peeling and actually addressing that properly. And so far, Savages haven't really been able to punish the the kind of lower healing backline that, that is coming out from Kratos. Haruhi has done a pretty good job of staying safe aside from a, a couple of early missteps. And, and now they, they're just going to take up position on the point straight away. And we're going to see how things are able to unfold here. Point number two, Kratos has the one of advantage. We're going to see the jump here from Vita. He's always going to get inside just to hug the pillar and not go to the other side of it intentional or not. He's staying on his team side here. We're going to see if we're able to get any shields. They able to get a lot of shields, actually. Off that suck. See if they're able to push forward with that. Haruhi and Momo going to trade out the gate here. Just each team down with support. Gunther going to go down quickly. Derek finding a rhythm. Finds two here. N2S going to clean it up. And Savage is 5.0. Going to get his first cap. I mean, that's just textbook from, from Savages and the, the comp that they're running right now. They they put their back to a pretty defensible position. They don't allow Maxwell and Default to, to really get in and lay in a ton of damage on the off angles. So, uh, they, and they just kind of slowly grind their way to a, a fight win there. Is now they, they get to set up defensively. They've got this orb turret for N2S. It's going to make it hard for uh, Kratos to push in. And they've had to swap their entire comp up. Ooh, and Haruhi here, a lot, a lot of up and a lot of down, but talk about the up swing there. He's knocking out Momo with the headshot. Derek can be taken down next. Beat him, taking out Ace of Spades. And just like that, that defense that we thought was really formidable just absolutely shattered here, and the retake happens. Well, we, we see just kind of, I think, a better form of the, the double shield comp come out there from Kratos. I think default on the Ash is just a, a much more powerful pick, especially with the, the power that the, the dynamite con in conjunction with a halt can bring to a fight. I think so too, and we're seeing here, how, how can a team like Savages rally? What extra plans do they have if you know, this initial comp doesn't work? What's their backup plan? Backup plan probably hit, clicking some heads, Derek able to do so. Making get the first pick on the board as they move on the point behind the window. Kravik Flex comes out, not able to find anybody quite yet here. High noon, empty handed, N2S gonna rip the molten core. Able to just sort of clog up that whole other side of the point, make it really difficult for Kratos to kind of attempt to recontest or even contest in the first place here. We just push way off point, but it had no picks have come out, and here comes the resurgence potentially. Derek finds Maxwell here. Window and shield still up online from the side of Kratos. Probably able to pick up some kills here, and ultimately their late investments pay off and they're able to sustain.
That, that's just excellent work there from Kratos to, to buy time and to stall throughout that fight. They knew where they were down in numbers, but they, they're able to bleed out ultimates from savages, hold on to a, a couple of key ones of their own. Maxwell did so much work in just buying time with the, the duplicated Arissa, hugging the central pillar, knowing that, that he was safe all the while, uh, and giving enough time for default to get back into the fight for that Davidic Flux to come through from Kral. We'll watch and see what Crowley did with put together as the main front line here. V is going to back up along with him. They're going to come close to 90% here. So we're looking at if they're able to win this fight at a final fight and a map win here. Lamp early to come out here, but might pay off as Derek and NTOS finds the kill as Derek finds a third. Derek finds another kill as well. Able to keep up the momentum. NTOS clearing them off. And that's effectively going to be an ace. It is an ace. And. That, that is all about that immortality field. It just it just lets them have free reign uh, to, to peek around that corner, even in to the supercharger that came out from Vita. So now a, a good turn of the, the fight there for Savages. They get to settle into the defense a little bit. They're gonna continue to have positional advantage. And uh, that is a, a big deal here on Gardens. For sure, we're gonna see credit um, to take from the far side here to move things oh. back. High Noon gonna take out Vita. Sort of a surprising pick, but able to land it regardless on the tank. So they're gonna be down as shield here as this next fight starts. That's why I find the kill on the Gunther. Derek popping off the DPS, finding their rhythm here. 4 7 5.0, and they're able to win another fight. And they, they almost do it too well there because it's going to give Kratos plenty of time to regroup uh, and get back in here for a final fight with their full six-man unit. But on the other side, both of those tank ultimates, the duplicate for into S, that ant matrix as well, the rally on the way, this is going to be chaos. Yeah, they've got to make something happen quickly here, though. The contest has to come in, and it does. They're going to see the Bob doing the contest on point. As they're going to have been really close trying to get back in time. Window is online along with the lamps here. Default is Bob to be the first thing taken out here. Derek finds the kill on Default himself. Gunther taking that next N2S. And Derek won't be denied. Ace of Space and Fish King joining the kill feed there. They're able to pick up a few more. It's just like that. It looks like that. 5.0 gonna push this to point three. They answer back in a big way and they, they use their ults so intelligently there in that, that final fight. I liked the, the Bob that came out from Kratos to try and stall things out and give them time to get in there. But there was just too much overwhelming firepower between the supercharger and the ant matrix that eventually came out from Momo. Trying to push through that, that narrow choke point in the white halls it is really just a no-go at that point for Kratos. They, they can't quite get in there for an even fight. And now it's all going to come down to control center. And so really here, and we've seen it sort of back and forth, we see Five, the expertise four, and the, the great three, team play from Kratos, but when you're one, playing against guys like N2S wow, and Derek, it's just really hard to stop them. No, it, it definitely is. And now N2S going to be uh, breaking out kind of a specialty pick of his, the junk right here, pretty much exclusively played on control center these days. Might see some play on Anubis, but we'll see what he can get done with it here. Trying to melt down those shields with Vita and Crawley. Yeah, Jay Silly here going to see what he can bust out. N2S making, maybe making a gamble. We'll see if it pays off. Derek going to trade with Crawley and Maxwell. N2S finds the C4 kill onto default here. And already a shield getting blasted. See Vita's shield is gone, if not out here. Very small. We're going to see another shield from Crowley in probably just a second. Charge not going to land. Anybody going backwards. Fish kick going to pop out Gunther. Guru and Ace Spade cleaning up, and that's a nice cap for the Savages. Indeed it is, and the Junkrat doing work so far. Already up to a rift tire here on Control Center. I mean, this is kind of the ideal location uh, for into s but now he just gets to fire through these choke points, which is going to make Kratos' life so difficult on the recontest. And we'll see how they're able to do it. We're already crossing 20% here, and Kratos doesn't really have a solid idea what they want to do yet. Seems like they're going to go through Tiny Hallway. They're going to try the speed boost right on the point. Able to do so. Window coming out. Pull comes in. Momo's going to take it down right out immediately. Haruhi, excuse me, taken out by N2S's Junkrat tire. 
Derek, they haven't been able to take him out for quite a while here, except the earlier they got him on one little trade, but he's able to find another kill on a Maxwell, and Savage at 5.0 is looking really, really good. I mean, Kratos, they, they want to brawl with this composition. They want to get up close with the, the May Reaper, with the speed boost that they have, but as they do that, they're just going to get spammed down from all angles. They're, they're always at risk of Derek hitting a couple of quick headshots, uh, and even once you get in close, you have to deal with the brig. Like, it, it, there is such a, a, a difficult situation uh, for Kratos to deal with. See if they're able to overcome that. But to this point, they haven't been able to. Derek finding a kill through the window. Takes out Gunther right away. Fish Cake able to knock the fall off the side of the ledge here. Meanwhile, pushing back towards spawn. Guru just chasing the team. Here comes the pull. Here comes the pop. Nothing quite yet other than Maxwell going down. So he'll be back shortly here. And with 85% here, who can Gunther touch? Like, how yeah. do they even? How do they even get to the point? It's probably gonna have to be default coming in with the, the, the wraith walk to, to trigger that out. It's gonna be awfully close here. Vita finds the kill on the Momo. Maybe Savage just got a little too cheeky. I think they're pushed up a bit too far. They gave up their ground and they gave up the point. Very well done here. It seemed like they were down and out. Gunther with a great speed boost, a team kill, and back on the board. Still though, uh, if you're savages, this is this is still all fine. You you've got ultimates to work with, and you've got time on your side. But you didn't get to force out a lot from Kratos. They didn't have to invest a whole lot to make that retake happen. So the, this could be going on for the the long haul here as the those ultimates come out. Let's see what's able to happen here. We see that the. Death Blast has come out, not able to land anyway, moved away pretty much immediately. N2S does have Rift Tire available as well, so watch for the pick potential there, but Harvey and Crowley not going to allow it. That's another team kill here from Kratos. What happened in the, the first 99% and who are these players now? Well, now they, they have control of the point. Now they have the, the fights that their composition wants to take. Now they have the Blizzard there from Maxwell, crucially, in that last fight. Uh, but now a lot of the ultimates have been burned for Kratos. They just got the Shatter ready to go. It's got to be big! Uh, this is going to be massive. Default Gunther Crowley cleaning up after the Shatter here. Default finds another couple of He's going to take that Ace of Spades. That's three team kills in a row here. Kratos, my god. They're making it competitive. They they are bringing this one back, but here is the, the real test. Here is where it becomes very difficult. All you've got is the Amp Matrix. Into us yet to unleash this Reptar. He's had it for a while. If he can find uh, an opening here, that, that is going to be huge. They're going to need to find something. After three consecutive team kills, they've got to be able to pull something together. N2S and Derek going to pop some ultimates. Derek's going to be taken down, but it looks like the Reptar is still available. Dancing around the lamp. Not exactly finding a way out, just pops it, doesn't do anything. Vita doesn't find the pin. Meanwhile, here we're seeing a, a slight push up from the fall, has to reload and back off. They've got point on their side, but they're gonna rotate off point onto the high ground. We'll see if this play from the stairs pays off. Derek is on the Doom Fist now. Maybe looking for a nice backline play. We see him go right to there immediately. They're gonna look for a pull and slam with the E. Doesn't quite find it here. Vita's gonna. Shatter, not gonna quite land anybody. Find the pin onto the bongo as the fight continues here. Gravity Flux doesn't land anybody either, but look at the fall and Maxwell. DPS coming online for Kratos with three team killers in a row. Now it's gonna turn into a blizzard. It's gonna turn into a map win. And what a comeback from Kratos here to round it out. That is just unreal. And like a lot of it has to do with the fact that that Savages, their comp kind of falls off once they lose control of the point and Kratos just gets infinitely better. Once you've got that May in control of an area, the, the walls become so much more powerful. The Blizzard is, is such an incredible Incredible ultimate, maybe one of the best in the game right now. Uh, and you know, they, they execute to perfection after uh, a really rough start there on Control Center. Kratos, a lot of resilience there, and it gets them a 1 0 lead in the series. And I think that's the advantage of a team like Kratos really finding a rhythm together. They were able to pull off something that for a while in that last point, I mean, was sort of unthinkable, right? I mean, they find a way to pull out three team kills in a row 
and something at this level, like it can't go under. Say it's not like we're dealing with ladder here of you know and just some eel. These are some of the best players you're gonna find out there, and that one team enforces their will upon the other that strongly is pretty remarkable. No, it definitely is. They they've got a, a lot to be happy with after that first map, but I have a feeling we are a long, long way from done in this series. You know, uh, Kratos obviously now on match point, but Savages, they aren't going to go down without a fight, and they, they very nearly had that one. They really did. And so we'll, we'll take a second here to remind you what part of the tournament and festivities we have going on. We also have the third Impact Content Cup. So Aqua sponsored that, was able to chip in $150 uh, into that reward pool. So with we want to feature what everyone out there is creating. So whether it's, you know, art, cosplay, clips, anything you kind of want to send in, you can have it possibly featured on this stream next week, I believe. Um, we'll have the winners picked by then. So if you want to submit to that, you can go on Twitter and submit it to hashtag OCSTHIC. That is hashtag OCSTHICC, full rules are on Third Impact's Twitter so you can get more information there. And then again, thank you to our sponsors, Byte Ramen and Advanced.gg. So at this point, you know, since that map actually did take quite a while, we'll take a look at the bracket here. And so we're seeing a few teams, a few more results coming in here. And Group H looks like we already had the next match played. So Old Man Strength is going to sit at 1-1. One one. Cloak falls to 0-2. And, and both these teams, it's obviously 1-0. So really the winner here might decide far more uh, than we might have even thought from the beginning. Yeah, I mean, and then you, you look ahead uh, to that, that next matchup where I believe Old Man Strength will be taking on Savages. Uh, I would have to, to check the schedule just to make sure, but that one's going to have a lot of implications as well. I mean, a very real possibility we kind of wind up in a three-way tie with these three incredible teams at the top of Group H. So... Uh, definitely going to, to be interesting to keep an eye on that throughout the, the remainder of the day. But for now, it looks like we are headed to Dorado for map number two. Dorado is going to be really interesting because we saw that sort of double shield into dive fight here. And we might have to see more traditional, possibly some shield Zarya, maybe even like a hog or something. I think tank wise we might not see that same sort of match they might be forced into more traditional duos here of like ryan hogg or ryan zarya yeah there's definitely a possibility of that i i do think the double shield is probably still gonna be very viable on point a but you know dorado is interesting to to me because it's going to, to give opportunity for potentially some different I would say DPS picks. I, I mean, I think the, the Ash Echo is probably going to be the, the go-to here, but it really depends on, like, stylistically what these teams want to go for. You could even see something uh, along the lines of, like, divier compositions, especially as you get into point B, you know, where you've got that that high ground, so, you know, especially powerful. Uh, the Widowmaker could definitely make an appearance on this map, so... I think we're we're going to get a little bit of a different flavor than what we just saw there on Legion Tower. And definitely, if you're we're going to get into some DPS tools, I mean, Savage is 5.0. We can't say enough about how well N2S and Derek were able to play. I mean, when they were able to start steamrolling, you know, things can get pretty crazy. We also want to mention, too, um, after this match, the winning team will bring in somebody along with us, one of their representatives, to chat with us for an interview. So that's going to be really exciting before... Uh, match number three so you want to stick around after this match for that before we cut to break and get the, the next teams into the third match of the day so it looks like we'll be getting ready to go into our next match here in just a second both teams figuring out who wants to be on attack and who wants to be on defense meanwhile if you haven't already mark your calendars we're going to be back here tomorrow night as well same time 6 p.m uh es or edt i think at this point so we'll be back 6 p.m tomorrow and then we'll be back next week as well with the main event 12 teams invited four teams coming out from the single elon bracket tomorrow night so you're going to want to be there for that the winners tomorrow will win 200 dollars for first place and then first and second place will each get all the players will get 25 dollars gift cards to Vite ramen so a total of a 500 dollars prize pool for the qualifier alone in the main prize pool for next week event i believe is already over four grand so we're gonna have a lot of exciting action to watch over these next few days of the tournament 
Yeah, for sure. And like, you know, to, to get your shot at that, that four grand next week, of course, first you got to get out of the, these group stages, which is a, a tall task in and of itself when you've only got one team per group coming out. Then you have to win at least once in that, that bracket tomorrow evening to get into the top four. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we've got a lot more Overwatch action coming your way. We're about to get into to Dorado here where I am excited. We, we do have one sub to note for Savages, Six Feet coming in uh, to, to play the support role. Fish Cake is out uh, this time around. So we'll, we'll see what that change means for, for Savages here. They were running a lot of Brigida coming out from Fish Cake on that, that last map. So I would expect potentially a little bit more Lucio in play from Six Feet. That would be interesting, and I, I sort of like the idea of a Lucio on this map, especially if they want to look for a lot of fights like under the bridge, if that's where they're ultimately going to hold it here. Um, I think they, that would really benefit with a Lucio, and I think this just opens up a lot more. I think we're going to see a variety, too, of no. Uh, Savages 5.0 does have a pretty deep roster. I believe they have the mm -hmm. deepest roster in the tournament, so not much of a surprise. They were prepared to sub. I don't think that's especially indicative of poor play or anything else other than the fact that they really just wanted to participate and so we're going to be seeing a lot of different people involved here um as we prepare for this one too from the side of kratos um just to kind of highlight what we saw there really consistent play sort of across the board and it looked like after that first map or first point excuse me haru he began to find his rhythm for sure and i i i have to kind of applaud just the the mental kind of fortitude that they showed in that that first map that's so huge in these events where you know you you do not have a lot of room for for error you lose this match and more than likely you are not going to be making it through groups at this point given given just kind of the state of this group at this point with both these teams being undefeated uh you you put yourself at a huge disadvantage so they they could not really afford to to kind of give up there on Legion Tower. Even though Control Center seemed out of hand, they're, they're able to fight it back. Uh, it, it speaks a lot to, to kind of resilience that Kratos are bringing to the table. Uh, and I, I'm excited to see if they can keep the momentum rolling here on Dorado. Ready for battle. Excited for sure. Out of the gate, it looks like we might be seeing a couple of Sigmas here, but obviously subject to change, at least from the attacking side. So our first attack is going to be from the side of Kratos. We're going to see Savage 5.0 on defense. Six feet coming out on the Baptiste. So no one's here quite yet, but I think... You know, this, 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 I think is, this definitely makes to... sense. This definitely makes sense given the, the rest of their comp that they're building kind of around him. You know, the, the Baptiste Zen uh, support line is so powerful when you're running these double shield comps. They, they have so much poke. Uh, so much long range damage and the the peel that six feet can provide to, to the otherwise squishy momo uh is top notch we'll see how it ultimately all unfolds here it's set up on the high ground pretty traditional here on dorado so they'll give up cart and then maybe i'm curious to see how early they're gonna swing around so they're gonna stay on the side ground pretty long it looks like both shields totally broken so a bit of stuck from guru before they're gonna retreat now around the side we might see our first contest of the match in just a second here. Indeed, and I'm, I'm curious to see what Maxwell can get done in this Echo matchup. Can he find the, the angle to lay it down? Not gonna happen. Derek with the shutdown. And beautiful lamp there right on cue, just as the doctor ordered. So I like this rotation too from the side of Kratos, looking to rotate, get out from underneath the bridge not give up as much high ground, try to get back on themselves here by N2S and Guru, Derek and Gang, just saying not so fast. They have the high ground advantage and they're going to finish them off here and the payload sort of puts them in an awkward position. Yeah, I mean, in that, that courtyard rotation just turns into kind of a killing field there. Uh, as the, the Amp Matrix comes out from six feet, they already had the, the man advantage in that fight, but now default nice pick off there is going to, to give a little bit of free push here for the time being over to Kratos. And yeah, that's a beautiful pick for sure. Really going to set them back. And ultimately here, once they get rolling, the old economy is going to really start pushing ahead here for Kratos. They've already got Harahi with the window available here with six feet. Not even close yet. So window's going to come up here. And I think 
and it probably might be smart just to see if we're gonna see Bob come out so they anticipated you know the recontest here and it's gonna might bode well for them here they invest a lot but the investment back doesn't pay off but they're still able to cap literally right underneath them yeah, Derek tried to, to make kind of the hero play using the duplicate up on the high ground onto the Sigma hoping to get that gravitic flux online can be a, a potentially fight turning ultimate but it just was not to be the focus was too good from kratos onto the other members of savages and they they pushed through point a relatively smoothly it started a bit slow but now they they've got a healthy time bank to, to work with and they they're getting set up for this point b fight by trying to contest the high ground early yeah we'll see if that's able to pay off a couple fall down so eight both main tanks i'm not sure if it was intentional or not probably was but they fell off so they're sort of just regrouping behind the scenes Derek able to find a, a pick on the maxwell winning that echo v echo match we're gonna see six feet already having to use the lamp doesn't have both available meanwhile haro he back to their second window so the discrepancy at the map is sort of really showing itself here ace of space gonna take out the lamp here they look to push up we're gonna see a trans here from Momo pretty early on. Not sure if that gave as much benefit as it could later, but still used regardless. We're gonna see double Ash. So we might see a double Bob, uh, at least one Bob very shortly here. Default gonna try to build up as well. Maxo hasn't been able to build his first one up yet. Finally gets it here. Both windows come out here, but look at N2S and Ace's face. Able to find a couple kills. Maxwell finding a different angle, taking down Derek here. The Echo ult didn't pay off. Bob didn't do a whole lot, and they're gonna have to reset. Yeah, the, the Ash is a weird one to, to try and duplicate because it really just heavily relies on you going and hitting your shots. Bob is not a massively impactful ultimate right now, so you're really doing it for the, the extra potential damage that you can bring to the table in the, the kind of dry fight, but uh, not happening there for Maxwell. The kiting too good from the rest of Savages, and wow, the swap over the Wrecking Ball works out beautifully for Vita. They, they, Burst down Guru quick. Yeah, I love that swap so far here. The slam on the high ground fights Momo. So well played and well decided there. Default gonna take down six feet. We're gonna see Derek gonna echo clone onto the Hammond. So already seeing the impact of the Hammond swap on, from both sides. Only Ace of Space caught between a rocket and a Hammond ball there. Taken out. They're gonna push in. And it looks like after a slight recontest here, they're gonna be able to cap point two unless. Guru pulls up something right, so it's not quite still get it here. No, indeed, and they're, they're even going to be able to hunt down a, the, the couple of remaining members of Savages as they, they try to retreat Momo in six feet. Not going to be able to get out with their lives. I'm not even sure if Ace of Spades has a, has a shot at it, but this is going beautifully for Kratos right now. They, they have the momentum on their side. They have ultimates coming online in the, the form of those mines, the, the transcendence from Gunther as well, Krari ready with that gravitic flux so they are sitting pretty right now I, they really are and we haven't seen you know derek and n2s haven't been able to get a foothold let alone guru in space they're really struggling to get anything going as i say so there's derek finding kill on the vita they're able to cancel out the lamp effectively n2s right on cue with the headshot here i just I mean, I cast the curse ultimately don't don't you know it was one of those things this doesn't exist but that's awfully coincidental they pick up a couple killers there and they're gonna win that fight no that that was that was totally our fault and, uh, <laughs> vita done with the the wrecking ball shenanigans knows that going into this final point you really need that double shield you need the the added kind of raw fighting power that it brings to you the, the protection for your backline to, to lay in damage effectively so even having to give up the the wrecking ball it's still worth it. we'll see window coming out on the high ground here into a lamp we'll see what they're able to pull off if anything into it gravitic flux from greg not able to land anything or Uber, excuse me not able to land anything yet Derek with the double kill on the high noon with the trans available finds the third one. Guru's gonna take down Crawley here at Savage at 5.0. Finally put a stop to the offensive. That was beautifully played by, by Savages, in particular six feet, dropping the immortality field in a completely safe location in that, that health pack cubby. Uh, it meant that Kratos, they couldn't push out even though that they had all this extra damage from the Ant Matrix doesn't do anything if you can't kill anybody uh and they they can't push forward to try to capitalize on it because that would put them at, at risk of just you know, free damage on the the other side so uh really well played from savages as they settle in on the defense 
SOS gonna use the dragon's gonna find default immediately. So that's a big DPS pick. Default's been providing so much here. Maxwell not has been able to generate any picks the last few fights. Maybe looking for a better angle, but here comes Sigma, but immediately deleted some SOS here again, finding a rhythm, not able to pull off any sort of double gravitic flux combo with Crowley at as we've seen before throughout the tournament. Momo going to take down Maxwell here. We're going to see N2S sort of popping off. The bridge is really setting them up perfectly. They just look down at Payload and have their way. Gravik Flex comes out. Pro probably didn't need it, but they're going to finish them off. And that's another good fight. Definitely didn't need it there from, from Guru. That was completely unnecessary. But still, Savages, they, they are controlling this defense quite nicely. And... Kratos starting to look a little bit uh, frazzled right now. That that last push was very split. They tried to send Krawi on a, a solo mission to, to clear off the high ground, but he cannot do that on his own, especially when the Gravitic Flux was not yet ready. This time it's gonna be him on the, the low ground, pushing the, the payload with the, the ultimate tower. Derek gonna look for another high noon shield. gonna block it. Dude, they're trying to get rid of it just in time. Holds his line. They can't, but nothing coming from it. Gunther gonna take down Momo. Derek, meanwhile, take down Maxwell. So Derek getting these early picks. Find another under Haruhi and Gunther. So no supports available here for Kratos, but Gravig Flux likely to find Vita here. Six feet takes him down next. And the fight continues on. Numbers are well in favor of Savage 5.0. They're just gonna body block the cart and stop him at 71 meters. And they, they do such a good job in that, that final fight of continuing to, to maintain control of the high ground and using that to deny the, the easy entry there for Kratos. Gunther literally never got into that fight at all. He, he had no impact uh, in that final fight because he was just zoned off. He was so far away from the rest of his team trying to, to enter through the main entrance, but Derek uh, and N2S just keep him at bay and they, they're eventually able to, to focus down the remaining members of Kratos, stop the, the payload. Not quite there at the, the very tail end of point C, so uh, a real opportunity for Savages now to get the, the win here on Dorado and send us to map number three. Yeah, and I think two there, I mean, I sort of jinxed it, but like we talked about, I mean, Derek and N2S to that point, until the third point, really weren't able to execute. Like, they just weren't setting up well. I think Guru and Ace of Spades were sort of getting out dueled in the tank battle. But ultimately, once Derek and N2S started to get a pick or two here and there, the momentum just sort of, the floodgates opened up and they found exactly what they were looking for. I mean, and so far, it's been interesting how much Derek has kind of preferred playing the McCree over the Ash. Uh, it, it seems to be a comfort pick for him, and there, once they got into that final area of the map, that's where McC McCree really comes alive. That's the ideal kind of range for him to fight at, uh, and he really started to take over on that defense. Yeah, you might not like it, but that is what ideal McCree play looks like. We're going to see here some play again. Bread and butter here of Dorado. High ground set it up. Pushing up the point, like we get just about here to that portrait on the side. Into West on the long flank, he's all the way back around, trying to find a, a cheeky opportunity here to get some early picks. Might have a chance on Maxwell. I don't think Maxwell knows he's there. We see Maxwell sort of dueling Guru here, able to get the best of him. Into West has to find something really quickly. They finally mm. find him turn around. You see Vita turning around here along the fountain. The chase comes out. He's taken down, so he didn't ultimately find Maxwell, but. A lot of time wasted, not a lot of pressure. No, I mean, you really have one opportunity to get the, the surprise shot. He missed it. He does eventually trade, which is not the worst thing in the world here. But, you know, you know Maxwell's going to be back into the fight quickly on that, that Echo. So really not a, a whole lot gained other than the, the entry into the courtyard here. They yeah, move their way under the high ground behind that, but what a pull to get them taken off here. Ace of Space trying to generate something that's pulling them up. You know, but not nearly the sort of level advantage here to a pull on any low ground. Default finds one, finds two. Maxwell cleaning it up. And the DPS here is starting to pop off here from Kratos. Yeah, I mean, N2S just completely incapable of getting into that fight based on where it took place. You know, up on that, that high ground, he was zoned out completely just by the, the geometry of the map. So unimpactful in that fight. Now going to go over to the Hanzo to give his team a little bit more in the way of shield break, more in the, the way of that straight up 6v6 fight. 
And we're gonna see if the, they're taking the long walk on the high ground here, N2S on an island up his own. But both windows come out, Derek's gonna go with the high noon. Pops it a little too early. If he waited a little bit longer, she might have actually been broken for him if he had time available. And so it's still a six on six. They're gonna wait for Vita to heal up just a little bit before they try to step up anymore. Oats mostly not gonna be on the line. And I wonder if Maxwell is gonna try for a double Sigma again or something. Yeah, definitely a, a possibility here. There's a lot of uh, decent choices on the other side, but he might not even need it so far. Ace of Spades falling off on his own, and without the main tank, Savage is going to have a hard time. They, they kind of just have to back off. Yeah, so now we're going to do a point where they're going to have to keep their eye on the time. We're under a minute and a half here as Maxwell takes that moment. That's a beautiful stagger, and that probably forces the next fight to take place. Only 60 seconds left. I mean, and, and given the way that the alts are kind of playing out here, we are starting to, to look at a full hold here uh, for Kratos and uh, an opportunity to close out this series. Indeed, they've got five on the board. Ruhi not that far off from the, the Ant Matrix as well, and only a minute on the clock. Yeah, they're going to have to... Either side's gonna have to muster something up because it is crunch time. Derek gonna be first one. Rock is taken out. We're gonna see Gravity Clutch coming out here from Crowley. Maxwell also on the Sigma 2, so we might see a second Gravity Clutch following in short order, but it's not even gonna be needed here as Crowley in default. They're pressing and pressing their will here, and sort of as you mentioned earlier, maybe too good of a fight. They're giving a lot of time left. Yes, but they, they hang on to their transcendence, and, and on the other side, you don't really have any way to answer that. I mean, Kratos can just get really aggressive off the, the back of that support ultimate uh, and you know, try to, to secure the fight win right here and now. Yeah, Guru's really going to need to build that Gravik Flex of his own really quickly here in the Gunther and Haru. Haruhi's ultimate. So we're going to see both windows come out, <laughs> both lamps come out at once. They might as well just be playing on the same keyboard. Crowley and Default gonna find three. And it looks like Kratos here. Card's gonna move just a little bit, but ultimately it probably won't matter. As N2S short of a literal miracle here of trying to hold it on. We've got Derek high above point. He falls to one. And what looked initially like a 99 is gonna become a 100 for Savage 5.0. Kratos turns it around on Lee Jung. And ultimately, they're going to turn it around here on Dorado after some stalling tactics. They should be able to put this one away. That was that was just beautiful. Kratos played that to perfection all the while. They they don't give opportunities over to, to Savages for the most part, who, who tried to go all in playing both the, the Widow and then the Hanzo for kind of that, that pit composition. But they, they just can't match up with the, the team fighting of Kratos in that that moment and uh, a really strong 2-0 coming out from Kratos here as, as they kind of secure their spot at least for the time being uh, at the top of the group. Yeah and brilliant display really from both sides and we saw in the play of the game highlighted that accuracy and sort of incredible acumen that we had talked about of a player like a Derek or like an N2S and but ultimately a, a, a team and the team organized the way Kratos was ultimately just proved too strong for them. Most definitely and you know it's not a, a surprise to see that I like I, I expected a little bit more out of Savages given the level of talent that is present on that squad right now but you know they they haven't been scrimming in the same way that a lot of these other teams are and and i think you kind of saw that there on dorado when savages was winning it was via kind of puggy style it was the dps really popping off individually uh and they they had a little bit of a harder time cracking through the setup of kratos who who just looked really practiced and polished uh, when it came to to that double shield defensive look that they were bringing to the table, and you know they they earn a well deserved victory here. They really do. And with that, we're gonna go to just a short break, and then we'll be back to interview a member of the winning team. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Turn toward me and look so weak. I've never seen you with such tired eyes. And everything we said we'd be, we just traded for a suit coat and a tie. Underneath the rose I 
Socks and shoes right off. That natural light is so damn polite, can make you feel just like you were young again. Standing underneath the rows of trees. Under our clothes, the fire grows. We are ready for this life of running wild. We're running wild. Underneath the rose of tree, I will see you where the ocean meets the sky. Under your toes. back everybody we've got with us gunther here from the winning side of kratos to talk about that win and so i mean we saw on lee jong i mean you guys came back with three team kills in a row can you walk us through what you guys were talking about and thinking about being down you know 99-0 and then sort of bringing it back all the way um so uh th that <laughs> control control center right yeah yes Control center was um, something something silly. Um, is, <laughs> expect the junk rat? Is is that what you're trying to tell yeah, me? Yeah. The second I the, the second I saw the mines tossing at us, I was like, all right, this is gonna be one of these games. Um, <laughs> but so you know, we were getting we were getting like uh, uh, just like stonewalled really really hard. Like we could not really get through chokes. Um, and then I think we were we were finally able to like win and cap when we had like pushed through really aggressively and were able to take one of those really brawly fights which reaper lucio ryan is really good in um and uh three team kills back to back uh i don't think anybody thought of it that way i don't think it was like oh god now we got him on the back <laughs> foot i think it was just well now we got it we gotta win now like it it it, it wasn't you know being excited about killing all of them it was just all right well this is what we need to do next we need to kill six again um <laughs> and then uh I, I think i think the real moment we won that map wasn't when it ticked over but was when uh vita hit the coast flank and then somebody mm. said max is still coming back from spawn are we sure we want to do this and then we were like no just go 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 uh and then we amped in vita shattered three yeah <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it was beautifully done, and I'll kick the shy guy for the next question here. Yeah, uh, so I mean, when you're you're kind of in that that moment where you know you you now have like no more room for for error when you've got to win every fight from from that point on, you know, does that that change things about how you guys are, are kind of approaching a, a fight? Um, are you maybe a little bit more loose with ults, or is it, it a thing where? You know, you know that you you still have two more fights uh, ahead of you, so you're you're kind of trying to keep them as you know as much as possible. 
Oh, uh, I, with alt economy, it's very much uh, like we want to use as few alts as possible. But if you need to use more, you're per do it. It's better to over it's better to overuse alts and win a fight than to lose a fight and say, ah, crap, I should have used bongo or whatever. Um, so you know, I, I I think it's just like we all trust each other enough to be like, if we're winning this fight, you know keep doing our thing no one no one's going to use anything but if you need to use something if you personally decide you need to use something then you use it that, now that's interesting because we had talked about a little bit the difference of your team you know obviously being a little bit more composed when savages 5.0 was sort of like a, a pug team put together for this sort of tournament a collection of really talented individuals seeing how that that team comes together and that level of trust how diff how big of a difference ultimately does that make like when you're planning a fight just knowing like hey, if i do one thing the rest of my team's going to be there like does that just give you so much more freedom to, to do what you're capable of oh yeah i think um it's all in, in double shield comps um no it's it's really difficult for one person to just pop off and win a fight for you um because it's it's very much like or you know rotating cooldowns and uh, uh, you know trying to play around certain sight lines, um, and so the fact that you know Vita every time trusted Haruhi to lamp him when he needed lamp. The fact that uh, uh, every time I would orb Max, I knew he was going to go do something with that. You know, he was going to go kill someone. He was going to go force out an off angle. Um, it's huge. You know, I can't personally speak for the savages. I know they're all they're all great friends at least, and I imagine they trust each other. But I I think the fact that um, me, Maxwell, Fault, and Crawley played together a lot on Simplicity a few months back. Really uh, uh, helps us be comfortable in the moment and you know just more cohesive as a unit. Okay, I want to ask you a little bit about kind of your specific place in the the meta right now as a, kind of a main support player. You you're having to I guess expand your your hero pool a little bit in terms of competitive matches. No longer can you be like a, a Lucio bot anymore. You you have to be picking up uh, <laughs> picking up uh, the the Zenyatta in your case, which I, I think is a little bit unusual. I mean, uh, most main supports we see kind of playing the the Batiste more often than the Zen. So, you know, what is kind of the, the reasoning behind that? Is it just like individual levels on those heroes or, or what what is kind of the, the reason there? Um, well, sure, uh, honestly speaking, Haruhi is better than bo uh, than me at both Zen and Bap. <laughs> <laughs> you know, bar none, he is better than me at those heroes. And he's probably better than me at Brig too. I think if we had two Haruhis for our back line, we would be a better team. <laughs> but uh, I think... Um, I, we were just like watching some contenders games um and we were just like we i think we were watching like ti versus uh versus doge and we were like well what's the difference between how doge is playing versus how ti is playing specifically with their main supports and we saw um, a fox on bap versus zolik on bap and i was like uh you know i'm just gonna i just want i want to play zen zen sounds fun um and also you know i i trust haruhi to like have you know really strong mechanics with bap um we normally don't play double shield on um, gardens. We've never like really had to experience that in a scrim. We've never had to deal with that mirror. Um, mm -hmm. So my BAP is super out of practice. Um, I haven't played a BAP in a hot minute in scrims. Um, but my personally, I've played a lot of Zen. So this, I don't think this is a really big shift for me. Um, I think if I didn't enjoy Lucio so much, I would be a flex support. Interesting. And so we'll get you out of here on this, Gunther. So for a tournament like this, where you're going from best of three to a single elim, and then ideally, you know, onto a next round, so what's the hardest part of a best of three? Because Shaga and I sort of speculate different things, but I'm curious to your insight. Like, what's the hardest part about stepping in, knowing, okay, we have to win two out of three here? Best of threes have... Uh, so in a best of five, you know, a reverse sweep is like a big deal because that's mm -hmm. like, you know, it's so much time invested and mental energy. Best of threes are hard, or, uh, are harder sometimes because your margin for error is so slim. Um, you know, you don't have a map or two to fall back on and say, guys, what the hell are we doing? You have one map, and then if, by the time you want to have that conversation, you're probably already losing the second map. Um, so I think just from minute one, you have to be on it. You have to be ready to go and, you know, adapt in the moment. You know, there's you have no room to mess up 
for sure. So thank you, Gunther, for joining us. Congratulations thank you for having me. on the win. Yeah, it, it was an absolute pleasure. And so we're going to cut to a short break with some adverts, and then we'll be back in just a bit with more from the Overwatch Community Showcase, powered by Third Impact and Natter. Don't go anywhere. Ramen. It's great, but not great for you. It's loaded with sodium. Sodium spikes your blood pressure. Lots of pressure. If there's too much pressure, it explodes. You don't want to explode. You know what else you don't want? Empty calories. Do you like having muscles? Then you want protein. So much protein. Muscles let you breathe. Are you even breathing right now? Do you want to keep breathing? I have just a thing for you. Ramen, but with less sodium and lots of protein. No exploding and you keep breathing. Fight Ramen, loaded with protein, vitamins, and minerals. Not loaded on sodium. Buy yours today at fightramen.com. Use your muscles to type code IMPACT at checkout for 13% off. Make sure you keep breathing. Enjoy Fight Ramen. Turn toward me and look so weak. I've never seen you with such tired eyes. Welcome back, everybody, to the Overwatch Community Showcase, powered by Third Impact and Natter OW. I am Paul, joined alongside Shy Guy, and we're excited to be getting you ready for match number three here coming at you in just a little bit. And what we saw there uh, from Kratos and just heard from Gunther, I mean, honestly, is nothing short of exceptional, Shy Guy. When you're talking about best of three and sort of the, the need for... Uh, to really hit on those cylinders they did it from control center on no for sure i mean and it, it, there, there's a lot of pressure on all of these teams at, at this point in the tournament especially as we we are about to head into the final round of uh, group stage play here we're going to be figuring out which eight teams are going to move on to that bracket uh to tomorrow to vie for those four spots in the main event next week um, but now we are about to, to turn our attention over to Group F, uh, where we will see the Dojo take on Lunaris. And this one's going to have a lot of kind of implications for, for how this one goes. Dojo sitting at 1-1 one one right now, Lunaris at 2-0. and oh. If they win, they secure themselves a, a path into the, 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 or, uh, the, the bracket tomorrow. Uh, easy peasy. If not, we're going to wind up with a three-way tie at the top of that group. Yeah, and I, I'm looking at the bracket. We've already got some teams finished, like done. So Regen already stamped their ticket to tomorrow, three and of. So congratulations to Regen in Group D, Underwater in Group E, moving on. Um, it looks like those are the only teams so far. I'm, uh, no, excuse me. So Asters uh, looks like wrapped up as well. They're at two and one, while Reckless fell to zero and three. So that Group F is still up for grabs here. And so right. we'll, we'll wait and see some more results. But, I mean, if, if Kratos is able to win this next one I mean, and come out of Group H, I mean, they're really going to have some hard matchups coming up. No, for sure. I mean, they, they've got a, a tough road ahead of them having to, to now go up against Old Man Strength to kind of secure their place. Otherwise, we could wind up seeing another three-way tie in that group. Uh, there, There's a lot of potential uh, for kind of interesting things going on uh, just around the, the tournament as we, we head into kind of this last round of play. And I am extremely excited just to, to see how it all shakes out, to see which teams we're, we're going to have moving on uh, to the, the bracket there tomorrow and to, to earn their shot at the, the main event. It, it really is a lot on the line for these teams, a, a chance to, to really test themselves against some some real Tier 2 talent and some, some of the best teams that we've got uh, in Tier 2 and Tier 3 Overwatch. So, like, uh, there there is a lot on the line. 
Absolutely. And so as we get ready for our teams to roll through here, we'll take a second speaking of the main event to thank some of our sponsors. So thank Vite Ramen again for their sponsorship. They are have been uh, historically a longtime sponsor of not only Third Impact, but really the whole Overwatch Tier 3 and Tier 2 scene. And I, I even saw them in chat earlier, which is just awesome. So, you know, kudos to them and, and many thank yous. Um, so if you don't know about Vite Ramen, they supply a savory three-minute meal with all the nutrition you need. They're a small business making complete nutrition, delicious, convenient, and with living wages. And as well, advanced.gg, if you don't know what they are, they are a gaming supplement company with a mission to produce only innovative products that work, products that do exactly as advertised and that's something you know in the supplement realm you might not see all the time but you see it with advanced.gg use code impact i-m-p-a-c-t for 10 percent off your next order at either location again that's code impact for 10 percent off your next order and so as we're getting ready here for this next match i've had the privilege of casting the dojo several times before as we're looking at into this and I mean, if you don't come up with a way, we talked about in the last game, Savage is 5.0, trying to stop Derek um, and N2S, but trying to stop Berserky and Prodigy, I think it's just such another level. They're like hive mind, man. Like when they start, like once they have their sights set on somebody, they're going to have a lot of issues trying to stop them from the side of Lunaris. In, indeed. But I mean, you, you come in with the, the praise there for the dojo and it, it's warranted for sure. And um, it just makes me, I'm kind of surprised now to, to see them at one in one in the, the group here. They, they have uh, fallen once so far. So now like this is, this is do or die. Like this is it. If they, they win this match, they give themselves uh, a shot at making it out of the, the group here, but they, they do not really have room for error, even when it comes to the map score. Once you have lost one match, you probably realistically need to be getting two O's in your, your other two to, to really give yourself a good shot. I think so, too. And I think ultimately we're going to be seeing teams really push to their limits in, in this sort of format. We heard Gunther talk about the, the need the need to hit on those owners. And even tomorrow night, I mean, tomorrow's single Elim. Like, you just don't have, I believe it is best of five, though, tomorrow night. But even still, like, once you're out, like, you're on the ropes really quickly if you have any bad maps. Um, and so they're going to have a difficult time there. We can also take a look as we look at some of these other groups here as well with our bracket. Group C still a lot to be decided there. No one's even hit two wins yet in that group. Group B, Rats off to a strong start with Avoided. I believe they were two of the top seeds, if not the two top seeds. So that's no surprises there. So right now it's looking like probably Avoided, Rats, not, but Nocturnal and Purple are going to probably have a clash here soon. I don't believe they've played yet. Kratos, um, Dojo sitting at 1-1, one and one, Lunaris 2-0. and oh. So, I mean... All of these teams, again, they're so talented. There's so much talent across all of them that to really think, okay, one team up against another, that one's just like far better, sort of impossible. Yeah, I mean, and we're we're in such a tough situation. We we started the day with 32 teams. We're whittling it all the way down to eight. Like we are cutting the vast majority of the, these squads after today as we, we kind of whittle it down to the very best of the best. And, you know, that that makes for some very stiff competition right now. You, you cannot really afford mistakes. Uh, you know, anything other than perfection is going to, to be punished throughout this event. I mean, that that's what we saw already happen to the dojo. Um, earlier on against Astros Fan Club, and uh, you know now they they really have their their backs against the wall here, as they they try to make the comeback, try to keep themselves alive in this event. For sure. And we just do a little housekeeping here. So we're getting ready for match number three. The teams had a really quick back to back. So they were just warming. I think actually like, the other way around, I think they had a big delay. So they were actually warming back up. So we want to make sure our players get a chance to be their best on stream. So we thank them for their patience there. And thank you for your patience for sticking around. Um, coming up. So we'll have match number three come up between the Dojo and Lunaris. Following that, we're going to have another VOD review session with Natter and Zenith with their microphones fixed. Thank you to production and everyone for that, you know, working out the kinks there. We've got a great production team and everything behind this. And shout out to Raven and everyone involved. Raven's been so instrumental in putting this on, getting us involved, getting everyone involved. Um, so applause to Raven if you're talking to her, whether it's for help anyway with the tournament or just in chat, you know, please reach out and thank her because she's been a wonderful person to work with and a, a wonderful part of Third Impact. Um, so we'll be doing 
the educational session after match number three. I believe we probably have another giveaway coming up if it didn't happen already. And then you would see these two pretty faces here back to sign us off after all of that. And then we'll be back to do it again all tomorrow, Shy Guy. You know, there's no breaks for us here either. We got to be no room for error and best of threes for us. No, and I mean, I am like, as we look forward, I am so excited for tomorrow as we, we get into that bracket, that single elimination, that do or die, especially that first round. Like that, that's where it's all on the line. That Those are kind of the, the qualification deciders. The the four teams that win that opening round are going to earn their, their ticket into the main event uh, next week. Uh, where they'll they'll get to compete for you know that expanded prize pool up against you know some of the the best talent in the scene get some more you know kind of uh, attention and eyeballs on them uh, a lot of chance for exposure for these tier three players who, who are kind of trying to to break into that next level of competition. Absolutely, and we saw even just highlight to highlight that the other day, right after the matches ended for contenders, the next day we saw Kevster immediately sign the Gladiators. I mean, you're and which watching it was like, okay, this is an owl play. Like, yeah, like, you, like, like you could just see it, and and the exposure that we can give these teams. Um, so sort of the this is the the PSA of support t two and T three. You know, I, I, as all of us do. I mean, so many of us devote our time and our lives to this, and. For many, it's a hobby. For others, it's a career path. And so whatever you can do to help support somebody who's doing this, who's devoting their life and their their time and efforts and energy to it is to be respectful of that. And let's let's keep giving back as much as we can. We've got a cool thing going here. Uh, so as we, we check on how our teams are doing, um, I believe I believe it looks like everyone's loaded in. So it looks like we'll be loading in a second. And it, it seems like we're going back to Lee Jong. I hope that is the case because that's just such a good map. Yeah, I it's it's where I kind of like I, I don't want to start series on anywhere other than like Lee Jong or Nepal. Those are the, the two options that I really am like always excited to see when it comes to to those control maps. Throw in a little bit of Ilios and Oasis every now and then. But Lee Jong is like the bread and butter. This map no, is is probably my favorite in the entire game i i personally like i'm a sucker yeah. for control when i'm playing uh I, I love i love just kind of the the brawly like death matchy style that that happens on these maps and you know it, it makes for a great place to start off a series yeah and i have to agree and uh yeah lee jong's just so good and like i mean that goes for most of the maps in this game there's only um a, a lunar a couple that like just fall flat on their face but and we're seeing here early on so the change up from dojo if you've watched them in the past or in other tournaments here luke mino is playing for them so the last i looked he's roughly at like 46 97. I, like i didn't even know you could have that high of an sr i believe that's worthy of no foreign here. concept to, to diamond scrubs like us yeah like when you when he possibly doubles me on an off day <laughs> I feel like a real chump, you know what I mean? Like, that's just not, I don't need that sort of negativity in my life, Luke. Like, what are okay. you doing to me here? <laughs> Sorry to interrupt, but we have got the, the hog and ball coming out here. Uh, let's on, go. Let's go. This is going to, to be really interesting to see. Yeah, I, and I love the variety here. We saw teams play here earlier, and the teams look nothing like this. And now we're going, you know, four off tanks entirely, Sombra Soldier into Tracer. And we're gonna we see uh, Echo the lineup a little messed up there when they loaded in, but still nonetheless. But Tuna gonna find the first kill here onto Economy, and the action is already rolling. So we're gonna see here Tuna looking to clean up a little bit more. Nothing quite yet from but Lunar is able to get that first point. Yeah, I mean, getting rid of the, the Wrecking Ball immediately is so crucial. It, it denies any ability to contest the point, and now they're, they're looking to, to kind of pressure out Prodigy, keep him uh, from going off on the Sombra in the back line. Yeah, and they're going to have their hands full with Prodigy. Like we said at the beginning here, if you're trying to stop Prodigy and Berserky, you better bring everything you've got. Tuna already close to the ultimate here, so watch for the Echo Spike. They're going to cross 25%. Window is out from Luke Nino already. We're going to see a Nano, and we're going to see Tuna going onto the Hog here. So we might see a Hog combo. Really like that. The Triple Tank lineup up with a bit more variety. They're using that to their advantage. They're going to push this to 40% here with a nice hook coming in late. And they're going to be able to chase down these last couple members. Luke Mino and Berserky, no chance to, to really get out of this situation alive. And this is looking a little bit scattered from the dojo. They, they are all over the place right now. 
I'm glad you said because I was watching. I was like, wait a second, why are there three people here and two here and one spawn? So Dojo a little bit out of sorts. You're really struggling with bowl being pure and I think just the comp in general. Yeah, I mean, this has gotten very, very chaotic. The bomb in over the top. Ooh, nothing quite from it yet. Bulby and Light both taken out. Light takes himself out, I believe, there with it. And here comes the EMP Prodigy finally finding something. Economy getting a couple kills on the board, too. But we see Fjord and Tuna on point here. They're going to have to look for something. They're going to be able to try to wrestle control the light. Dojo needs to find a foothold as they're approaching 85%. Sluggo going to find a kill on the Spice. Rally's gonna come out here from Nifkin. We're gonna see Berserk. He tried to look for something. We haven't even said Berserk's name. Awfully quiet start to the game. Shooting into the tanks, but no love to this point. 93% coming up. We're seeing a Nano Noxus here on the Brigidas. They're in a world of trouble here. Nifkin taking out Berserk. He finally finds somebody on the kill feed. We see Echo pull out the Soldier here for a whole lot of damage. Really quick visor. Very well played. And just like that. Onslaught from Lunaris. So they're gonna take first point here, Shy Guy. Yeah, that was a weird one. I'm not gonna lie. That, that was, was very strange. That was bizarre. I I really I don't want to to be too like upfront about this, but I really have to question the decision making from Dojo to roll out with the the wrecking ball Roadhog as your your tank line, and then the soldier Sombra as your DPS. You you just don't have a lot of like potential on this team you don't have easy ways to, to find kills unless the the hooks are coming through hot and heavy and they they frankly they just were not on, on quick no and they have a lot of making up to do i went that whole game without saying prodigy to berserky's name and i'm gonna i'm not gonna chalk up the bad casting so much as i didn't see their names in the kill feed except for on the dying side and like so i but i like the aggressive play here you know putting the symmetra out first yeah, they, they get the teleporter, and now they're going to wrap around to the high ground, which is really great for, for what their comp wants to do with this Ash in the lineup. They want to control this space, lay in damage from afar, uh, and force the fight on their terms. Yeah, Nefkin able to get that first pick on the Nox. It's a Berserk he taken out immediately, so just really struggling to find a rhythm here. Spice is taken down next, so they're without one of their tanks. Economy's their only frontliner here. Prodigy and Nefkin's going to follow into the spawn in short order. And just like that, Lunar is putting their foot down. Yeah, and all of that really comes off of the, the halt from Bulby. It, it pulls uh, Dojo off of that high ground where they were in a relatively safe position. They're able to capitalize really quickly. And now you've got this May Reaper set up in the choke. The walls are going to be impressive. The, the close range damage is going to be so difficult to work through. Uh, this is beautiful for, for Lunaris. Yeah, this is textbook how you want to play this hole here. Windows out in great position here. Really impressive. Berserky headshot by Tuna. So Tuna just can't have the action here. We haven't even gotten to say much of life, but they've been, Lunaris has been working at such a well oriented core here. Um, but look at the back cap coming in potentially from Prodigy here. Not just going to go chase that out. They don't even, they're not going to be missing that extra healing too much. They're not dealing with a whole lot here. Shatter comes out, not going to find anybody. Just goes into a wall, but Luke Mino and Nipkin can be taken down, followed by Prodigy in short order. And, and they're pushing this to spawn, and the dojo just not quite here right now. No, they, they have not shown up so far in this series. Lunaris just in complete control from start to finish now they've got ults coming online the blizzard ready to go from tuna how do you even push into this i really don't know no i have to say i'm pretty confused at this point i'm not sure what exactly the, the stall is but spice is going to eat tuna's ultimate so maybe they're able to galvanize around that for turkey bob finds noxus here A little momentum building economy takes down pure they've got a couple picks and they've got to move the point time's getting short one of my teachers used to say, time's getting short. They better reach up and tie their shoes. Bulby going to be taken down now. Slogo and Tuna going down as well here. They're able to recapture at 95%. But that's totally fine for Lunaris. Yes, you, you lost that Blizzard. A great play from Spice to, to eat that one up. But now you get to, to just kind of bide your time, wait for the next Blizzard, probably win off that, or just do it like that. Just pick off the Zerky. Now you've got a 65 yeah, Light gonna take down Berserky. Great start to the fight here. We're gonna see Bongos and Lance. I'll be taking down Kilpie. Just cluttered with the paraphernalia here. 
liking to go into economy. That's a pick. That's absolutely massive. Both take taken down. We're gonna hear the shatter come out. Not finding anybody here, but look at Nox just punching Luke Mino out of the action. Bolby cleans it up. And just like that, look at the split. That's a 2-0 start here. And Lunaris is on fire. Blink and you will miss it. Lunaris, they, they come out swinging in this series. We've touched on it time and again, the importance of the start here on control maps in these best of three series. And Lunaris came prepared. They came ready. Uh, they, they had a plan for both of these points and they executed it pretty much to perfection. I mean, one little blip on the radar in terms of an eaten blizzard and a lost fight here on control center, uh, but they light it up there on Legion Tower. Yeah, I think and part of it was our surprise that sort of the, the showing there from the dojo, but Lunaris, I mean, really just giving a performance that you, you can't draw up any better, right? I mean, just total dominance throughout every fight, top to bottom, you know, double support picks, double tank picks. It's it, no matter what they wanted to do, just keeping Prodigy and Berserky out of sorts and out of whack. However you draw up your game plan and priorities, Lunar has checked every box. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they they just they pop off completely uh, there on Legion Tower, and we're going to have to see if they can kind of keep the the momentum going as we we head into this last map or the, the the second map rather and potentially the the last one here if lunaris can take it um yeah, I was gonna say, that's but, a freudian slip in the making i mean we're both thinking it if dojo I mean, looks like that again this could be awfully quick man it, yeah i mean that that was as one-sided as it really gets in a map of overwatch right there of course it is control which just tends to to give you some kind of wonky outcomes in general when we're we're talking about the way that that series tend to, to start it goes it can go dramatically different from the the other kind of maps in the pool uh but still like it, it's not where you want to be as dojo even if you can kind of block that one out put it out of your mind and refocus for the the rest of this series you've now dug yourself into a hole that you you've got to climb out of and that is is hard when lunaris is kind of there at the top poking you down and, and keeping you from, from climbing up a ladder. Yeah, and then we look at that ladder here. Lunaris is 2-0 and in and, and Group F. If they win, they're in. So we talked about earlier, being able to control your own destiny. I mean, they've got it set up for themselves. They win, and they've got something going for them. Ultimately, so if, if they were to lose, they would tie with Asters, and I believe it would go to some form of a tiebreaker. So we'll, we can confirm that um, with the administration here for the tournament in just a few minutes if that were to happen but lunaris victory still well on the table here it looks like we're going to gibraltar i mean this yeah, is this is, is yeah i i believe it is and that is a dramatic shakeup here to to be sure like if you are dojo and you you see that first map and nothing went your way and you're just like we got to throw something at the wall and, and try to find an answer gibraltar can be that where we're this this map plays differently than pretty much every other map that we've got in the, the pool here so like i i do like this especially if dojo feels like they can come out uh and you know perform on, on kind of divier compositions it looks like we get a bit of a pause here as we load in. And honestly, I think if we're talking outside of control, hot take, I think Gibraltar, other, obviously other than King's Row, let's put like that's we've got S tier. We'll push that aside for a second. Like Gibraltar just offers so much. And this might be something that like what the doctor ordered for Prodigy and Berserky, right? So I've seen, so we've seen Prodigy be really good on the Doomfist. We see Berserky excel on the snipers here. Maybe this gives them an opportunity to bust out some of those toys that they love to play with and give them an advantage that they just couldn't muster in some of the dense corridors that you find on a map like Lee Jong. For sure. I mean, uh, there there is absolutely no part of Gibraltar that is going to play anything close to, to control center. Um, I, I think if you're Dojo, you can kind of block out what happened on Gardens, just chalk that up to like the weird compositional decisions that, that you guys were making for whatever reason at the time and, and settle into something a little bit different here. Um, but Lenoris coming out on the defense, nothing too surprising here. 
yes, you could see some some dive setups on the the defense, but they're gonna stick with the tried and true. They are going to to go with that that double shield as they roll out. Yeah, we'll see how they're able to perform here early on. Looks like we're gonna have you know switching at the last second here to the Baptiste. Ultimately, here, Nifkin's coming out on the Brigida. I believe that's you know typically her main, so we're gonna see her on a comfort pick here in a, in a, in a great map for it. Economy and spice, like you said, double shield into double shield. So early on, a lot of shield blasting here. They're gonna situate on that high ground. Nothing quite landing yet. Pole comes up, rock is gonna be blocked, and they're gonna make their way underneath easily. And given the high ground control that, that we're seeing out of Lunaris right now, I favor their comp. I mean, Nifkins have to get in close to really have impact on the Brigida. If they can start brawling, then she'll have a, a really you know big role to play. But until then, uh, they're going to be at a disadvantage. I have to agree. And I think, you know, Berserky taken out again, had not really able to generate any pick potential. And so I'm waiting to sort of see a comfort draw. You know, like, like imagine when you're on a... Our, diamond ladder and all of a sudden you're like okay everyone just pick whatever and you start seeing like may reaper with a hog ryan like I, i'm waiting for dojo to just kind of say look this isn't working we've got to try something else to get our guys like berserky prodigy going we're just not hitting yeah now though they they will be able to rotate up to the high ground they'll take control of blue box is a really crucial position on this first point but spice just loses out to the 1v1 against tuna that is unreal yeah, it, Tuna is really pulling everything out here. Tuna being the all-star so far, in my opinion. We're going to see, look for some pick potential here. Berserky just really struggling to get through these double shields, and that's sort of what you expect with any sort of sniper. Getting through double shield on top of a lamp, on top of you know, a lot of this extra healing, just gets really, really difficult here. So, But they've got Lucmino's window here, and if they're able to set something up, but watch out, Tuna also has ultimate. And you've seen how impactful that duplicate can be. If you can get it onto to something like the, the Sigma on the other side, Luke Tuna coming in on the flank right now, though. Absolutely. So we're going to see everyone oh, really low. The lamp catches everybody alive there. So Luke Minu just with an un godly lamp keeps everyone alive spike's gonna take down tuna tuna still though takes down the economy here so we're gonna see this fight see bulby's trying to position around but berserk has got the dynamite we see the double excuse me the double ash here we have a bob coming out from prodigy because of the echo ultimate nothing quite yet able to bust the shield here but at least the cart is moving for them light's gonna find a double though on the point the brawl continues. Spice gonna pick up Tuna, but Car's gonna roll through regardless. <laughs> oh my God, Lunaris! That that is that's the unforgivable sin right there. <laughs> Letting the cart look slow roll away from you. They do wind up losing the fight, so it was probably going in that way all along. But still, they they lose out on point A. We finally see a bit of life here. Uh, from the dojo as they they surge through point A. Now they get to go take position in and around this shuttle phase. Berserky up on the, the high ground, but has to be worried. Tuna is coming for it. Yeah, Berserky's got to find a way to win that matchup. I mean, Echo's just so strong and so slight that a lot of these pitches are ultimately really hard to execute, but Berserky's going to have to put together something. Meanwhile, the card's working its way under the bridge and under the shuttle. Lots of paraphernalia being taken out, but here comes a real person. Get, get hit in the kill feed. Here is taken down. Prodigy getting on the board. Window comes out. Zerky finds the kill with the Bob on the Bobby. Tuna's in a tough spot here as Lumino jumps up with the lamp already out. Prodigy finds another. They've got a kill it, but the car just rolls through the whole time and they're able to push it through behind. No contest here from Lunaris and they've got them finally on their heels. Okay, it's the, the point B of Gibraltar speed run coming out there from the dojo. As they, they push forward, they keep their momentum going, which is exactly what they needed in this situation. They needed an answer. We weren't sure where it was going to come from, but they, they seem to have found their footing uh, a little bit. Berserky finally getting the, the space he needs to pop off, and the, the team is rolling. See them getting around to the corner already again. Uncontested at this point. 
so Unar is now the ones finding themselves in a bit of disarray. Bob gonna come out here. Light does find Nipkin, so maybe that begins to put an end to the push. Bulby picks up economy. Spice joining them in spawn. That'll be three. They've got the rest of them trapped around health pack, and they'll stop the bleeding with 315 to go. That's excellent there from Lunaris. They're able to recontest and secure control of the cart right here at the, the top of the hill. That's exactly where you want to, to be holding if you're them. Now you get to split your team up, half of them on the low ground, playing safe behind the Orissa shield. The other half controlling this high ground, forcing the double shield on the other side to, to just kind of be split and not able to, to focus on the cart. They haven't been able to yet. And again, the Echo is sort of providing, like you said, those extra angles to operate from here. We're going to see an Echo come out. Prodigy and Tuna both. So we have four Sigmas on the field right now. We'll see how many Gravitic Flexes ultimately come from this. Is Berserk is taken down. Prodigy, Hollow Game is going to be the next one to go. Gravitic Flux has several of them up in the air. They're able to land a few. And that's just going to round out the rest of the offense here. Another great fight win and recovery here from Lunaris. And so much of that fight is just on Pure right there, who, who takes the, the Sigma 1v1 up against Prodigy, who had just duplicated him, uh, just kind of outduels him on his kind of signature hero here, breaks out the, the Gravitic Flux to close out the fight, and uh, really big plays coming in from the off tank on the side of the Norris. We'll see what they have in store next here. Holding corner, double window, so everyone's going to be firing with a whole lot more damage in store. Lucmino not able to quite find anything just yet. We've seen a lot of good picks so far from him. Significance has her ultimate online here, so we'll see what they're able to generate as well. Fighting continues on. Prodigy not able to find anything but the bongo tuna though finds a pick on the spice that's going to set them back a great deal here they've only got one shield and economy sort of field. and now it's starting to, to feel a little bit like the dojo is stalling out here they are hesitant to push forward and you know they have every right to be in this position there they're at an awkward spot in the map getting around this corner is easier said than done but now they got the supercharger and the bob yeah and the bob here that beautifully is sort of suppressing fire down into fuel storage. Meanwhile, the offense here finally really getting into a rhythm here. Spices, Gravity Flux finishing off a bunch of kills. Prodigy and Luke Mino adding on to it. And with 45 seconds left, they got another good fight here to finish it up. Yeah, and now they, they've got uh, Lunaris kind of pinned back towards the, the spawn on both sides. They're gonna have to use the trench just to get out. Right, and at least it'll provide a stall. 1.77 left, though. They can't afford any mishaps. No Charlie Niners here can happen. But look, they don't even get to touch it here. As he, the caster says it, they find a three out. Hey, no Charlie Niners here, except for, for Lunaris. Once again, they do it on point A. They do it again here on point C. I mean, it's the same story. Like, they, they were losing the fight. They were at an awkward spot. And they, they kind of just had to, to throw everything up the cart and, you know, hope that they can stick around but not gonna happen as finally dojo they they surge forward here on gibraltar they they you know get a little bit of a comeback in them uh and the the map pick looking solid for them yeah and so far i mean Lunaris here, like we said, controls their own destiny, and here they've got a real chance to put this away. I mean, 31 seconds, nothing that sneeze up, but they've got a lot of they've got a lot of opportunity here to really push a lead if they're able to send it the distance. And to this point, it seems like they're going to be able to muster something up. Yeah, I mean, I I have a lot of confidence in, in what Lunaris is going to to be bringing to the table here, but we're we're going to, to continue to see. Pretty much same old, same old here, at least from the, the defense of Dojo. Going with the, the tried and true on Gibraltar. Sadly, we, I haven't, I mean, I'm surprised we haven't really seen any Widow Light tried to, to make that swap at the very end there on the defense, but uh, so far it's pretty much just been Ash all the way. So we'll see how that pays off for both sides here. Light again has been fantastic in the series so far here. Shields just getting absolutely eviscerated. Sort of a replay of what we saw last time. A lot of shield clearing and ultimately they'll just push under for free. 
and I mean, Dodo, they, they know that you, you can't hold that high ground for very, very long. The, the best place, obviously, is this server room, but they've already used Immortality Field. That's a big cooldown down for Luke Mino. Yeah, that's going to pose a big problem here as we go into this next engagement. Cart three right now, and Tuna finds the first pick on the Prodigy. Will be going to be taken down, so they're going to have one. I swear to God, it's, it's a they're safe gonna nine. They're going to see nine. They're not touching the cart. Yeah, Arissa just kind of... Oh, they barely get the kill on the Tuna. Yeah, he was... we saw the same thing as before. We see the trailing defensive teams trying to make a stand here. Ultimately, maybe not going to see what pulls them down. No, it's going to be outnumbered with spawn difference, but that's way too close there. I mean, like, in, it's not like they even got out there too contested. They killed the only member on the, the cart there of Lunaris. That was almost disaster for the dojo to, to start off there. They cannot afford to give a big time bank over to Lunaris, so now they get to settle in for the defense. They get some ultimates coming online. Uh, well, we'll see what they can continue to make of it. Seeding uh, a little bit of high ground control over to Lunaris right now, but still in a pretty solid position. Yeah, they've got this nice position on the high ground. They've got the window, and they've got Nificant down, so she'll go back to spawn, and they'll hop back on the cart. Window comes out, though, from the corner, as in the group of the clock, so they've got a lot of ults at their disposal to use. Tuna gonna take down Berserking. Meanwhile, Pure and Bulby down, so no tank front line here for Lunaris. They have to do it. On this, so they're not able to quite land anything yet. Light doesn't find the kill here, and it looks like they're probably gonna go for a soft reset or try to find a, a nice headshot and find a pick. But Sluggo going down is gonna send them back. Excellent positioning there from the, the dojo playing kind of right up underneath the feet of Lunaris at the, the bottom of this blue box high ground, playing back towards their spawn a little bit more, not giving them an opportunity to use their their high ground position and giving them a great spot to, to use Lucamino's amp matrix to, to close out that fight. And with 130 left, they have several fights remaining, but they're going to have to be judicious in their ultimate usage here. Noctis is going to use a rally here, try to move in a bit. Tuna has ultimate available, but here comes Prodigy. They're going to be using the, the ultimate to get a Sigma of their own. So Sugo finds the kill on economy. That's the only kill so far here. A significant pick at that transcendence comes out. So all the ultimates really already used inside the dojo. Meanwhile, Renaris has ultimates of plenty as we hear just Sound effects and graphics galore. Look at the part of effects, ladies and gentlemen, here. They want the point, and they're going to get it. Light finds two. Noctis is going to clean it up. And just like that, they're going into the space there. And pure breathes a big sigh of relief there as his team kind of bails him out. He completely whiffs the Gravitic Flux at the tail <laughs> end of that fight. That could have been the, the clincher for them. But, you know, Tuna is there to, to secure the kills. They, they finish off that fight, and he doesn't have to, to worry about costing the team. As now they, they push into to point B. Uh, but if you're the dojo, as long as you can get a, a decent amount of stall here, you are not in a, a horrible spot. Yet. No, and they already have window available again, so Sluko going to do it with the Lucamino has the window as well, so we'll see how long that waits for that. Not a ton of value though, they're, they already have to rotate around. Noctis going to challenge fight on the high ground, he has to fall down. Lucamino's window you hear going off in the background, but here comes at least one of the five. Nope, it's a Bob B S. the Berserky able to find light, take him down and his mob. So at this point, they'll go for a reset here with just under 230. And that's exactly what you're, you're looking for as the defense now potentially getting some chase down kills. Sluggo in a little bit of trouble here, just barely staying alive. And Prodigy over chases for that one, gets punished. Yeah, get in really punished for that. Maybe a bit too overzealous there. Puts the team in a bad spot here, down one in a really crucial fight. Tuna finds the kill on the significance and the economy is going to go down next and Lunaris with these synchronized plays. It's like an art form for them. They're able to get an effective, an actual team kill and they're able to roll this one through with plenty of time to bang. Yeah, I mean, over three minutes to work with and by, by virtue of getting that team kill, they can push forward. They can get position on this third point. They can kind of ease the, the pain of getting around this first corner. Absolutely, and we'll see how they're able to ultimately dictate the pace here. We'll see a rally coming out early on from Noctis. They're going to be able to push in here. They're set up on this corner, so they're going to be able to spar at will. But look at that Gravitic's Flux. They're going to find three. Lamp comes down, well placed. But look at Sugo's got the window already. And we've got another 
excuse me, we've got another Sigma on the field here. So Tunis can then use the ultimate try to go for another group of flex on their own. Push way up, gets Mino in the air. He's in trouble. He's got his own lamp down. Light and Sugo gonna find two kills. That makes this a six on four. So they wait for the window to expire. And now they're gonna turn the corner and they're looking for the kill. It's light finds two and they find the point goes the distance. What a time advantage there, Shy Guy. Yeah, for real. I mean, and, and it all kind of comes down to, to the fact that Lunaris, they don't get hauled up at all there on point C. I mean, if you remember back to the dojo's attack, they, they struggled to get up that hill, to get around the corner. Easy peasy for Lunaris. They continue to assert their will on the series. And now they they, they nearly have three times the, the time bank of the dojo and an opportunity uh, to close out this series and secure their place in the bracket tomorrow. Yeah, and they that that time is just crazy. Now that I'm actually like putting in perspective once we see the the escalation so dojo obviously goes to a minute and lunaris equally goes up that amount i mean they've got so much time to work with here um dojo is really gonna have to put together quite the offensive here and i think at minimum they have to push like halfway through the second point to, to have a chance yeah you you have to to think like you pretty much you have to think that they need point a at, at the very least like that that is the the minimum you can really think that the dojo is going to have a chance to win this series or this map with um but they they've just got a lot on their their shoulders right now like this is this is your last stand this is your chance to to give yourselves a shot in this tournament in this match um you're you're now on the the back foot so let's see what they've got we'll see indeed so they've got just under a minute here Looks like we'll probably see a replay again of the last few. We're just a lot of shield burst and ultimately an easy path down, but nice rock there on the pole, good combination. And we'll go under just about the 30 seconds here before the first meaningful fight. Indeed, an interesting setup now from the, the side of Lunaris. They're gonna split up quite a bit with this defense gonna have, you know, pure and light up on the, the high ground, continuing to harass. Uh, from kind of behind the dojo as they try to push in and try in vain. Yeah, Tuna popping off, finds two. Can they beat, find more? They've got them in the they hallway can't here. It, I mean, Get this it. is it. 64, yeah. they, they're, they're down to the last chance. They've got to find somebody on card. Bulby denies economy. Luke Mio's going to follow in short order here. They haven't gone very far at all, but on six on one here at this point, they're not going to go any further. And even 60. Unless they can pull off something insane, try to take it down, and they're gonna fall pretty short here. Lunaris just has a short road to go. That is brutal for the dojo, to to be totally honest. I mean, even in your your worst case scenario, you think you're you're probably gonna be able to get it up that hill and like, you know, give yourself a decent position to try and hold from. But now. You've got to get so aggressive with this defense, and, and you only have one fight. Like you, no more mistakes at all. Yeah, they, they've, they've really got to put something together here. I mean, they've struggled at this point. We've seen flashes of brilliance, but overall here, Lunaris has ultimately controlled the pace and controlled how this match has gone. Ready for battle. And now they, they just need one fight to... You know, finish off the the three zero day here in the group stage uh, to secure their place at the top of their group. And you no, know, if you know, if, if they they continue to play like this uh, for this map and then moving into tomorrow, I, I mean, I think this is a team that, that we're gonna have to contend with for a while. Yeah, and Lunaris, I think ultimately is gonna make a pretty big splash if they're able to get through here, but. The dojo standing in their way. This is going to take a heroic Herculean defense here. But if a team is capable of a recovery like this, it might just be the dojo. So we'll see what they've got left in the tank here. We're going to see some pretty much the same comps we've seen to this point. It's going to be a mirror. Nope, no mirror matchup. We, yep, ultimately we're going to see a mirror matchup. We saw a hog initially out the gate, but we'll swap over to Sigma here. And I'm curious to see if they're going to have to play them up early. But Akami finding the pick already on the lights. So not a a replay of just a, a nice and calm cruise down the path here. First pick and they're gonna have to back off. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's ultimately not too consequential for Lunaris because they're just going to continue pushing the payload up underneath the, the bridge light, just about to, to get back into the fight in time to, to really get going. So now is where the, the real fight happens. They've got a contestant, though. Get they're going to Charlie Nina. Ooh. Economy almost just gave it up. They step on far too late, sort of scattered. Not even close to the shield there. Economy was set up along the staircase. Everyone else was set up somewhere else. 0.64 to go. Only one on cart. Luke Mino is going to try for something. Dumpton's there. And a clinic put on by Lunaris is there moving on. I'm not going to lie. It felt a little bit like the dojo forgot where the box of victory was on that that point like they forgot we needed to contest on the, the hill there and had the mad scramble to to make it in time and just didn't have the fight set up that they, they were looking for despite getting that opening pickoff and, and ostensibly like having the, the better position so you know well played to to lunaris as they they capitalize on the mistakes throughout the series they they keep cool heads throughout and they they secure the 3-0 day there in group f punch their ticket into tomorrow's bracket absolutely well played and so we're going to send you on your way here to the educational session with the coach's corner in just a second of natter and zenith but just a little bit of housekeeping here you just watched three matches from the overwatch community showcase powered by third impact and natter ow we'll be letting you know who's moving on to tomorrow after the educational session we'll sort of wrap up for the day and put a bow on things before you go on your way we'd like to again thank our sponsors Vite ramen and advanced gg use coupon code impact at either location for 10 percent off your next order we'd also remind you of the sponsored uh, event per se from aqua so aqua chipped in to allow us to host the third impact content cup so we want to feature your creativity ladies and gentlemen your art your cosplays your clips your rap videos your whatever you can think of if you think of something creative in overwatch third impact jiven related and you've got something send it in the the winner will be featured on the showcase stream i believe next week submit it to hashtag o c s thick you know how to spell it hashtag o c s thick find the rules on the twitter over at third impact that's third impact gg on twitter you can find the full rules there in the tweet regarding the third impact content cup aka thick and with that we're going to send it over to natter and zenith for a little bit of review of what you just watched but don't go anywhere we'll recap in just a little bit Turn toward me and look so weak. I've never seen you with such tired eyes. And everything we said we'd be, we just traded for a suit coat and a tie. Socks and shoes right off. That natural light is so damn polite, can make you feel just like you were young. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, so Zenith and I are here. Uh, we're gonna review Watchpoint Gibraltar actually from this match where we saw uh, Lun we saw I believe Lunaris uh, play uh, the dojo. And this is a pretty interesting match. Uh, we'll do a brief, again, a brief introduction on ourselves. Uh, I think some of you might already know us, hopefully, from the earlier section. Um, what but, <laughs> I'm Natter. Uh, I'm a strategic coach for Third Impact. Uh, I do some content creation, some other stuff. 
Um, Zenith, do you want to say a little bit about yourself? And I'm by Zenith. I'm the head coach of Third Impact. So that's about it. Yeah, so uh, th we're going to do a little bit different this time. Uh, the first educational segment, we talked a lot about neutral fights. We talked a lot about like sort of win conditions versus other compositions. Uh, this time we're going to go more into uh, we're going to go more into sort of like positioning and sort of like how to play spam comp be spam comp and sort of like where how off angles work and sort of how like stacking shields work as well. Um, so yeah, let's sort of like jump into the analysis and sort of let's go from there. Okay, so uh, the main fights we really wanted to look at, first, it was really interesting when we were watching this match, both of us were like, huh, they're running spam on watch point. <laughs> both of us didn't really expect that. Uh, we were really yeah. expecting to die. <laughs> Any thoughts on that, Zenith? I, I don't know. I spam, spam it, get me wrong, but I want to see some variety points. <laughs> like, Lee John was, that was questionable, but... It was, it was a lot of variety, that was a lot of variety. <laughs> Right. We saw a hog. Like I haven't seen a hog in a while. We saw a hog. All right. So uh, the biggest thing I want to really, I really want to talk about is, as everyone sort of knows, this hold that sort of happens around here. The fight that sort of will happen around this area, right? So we're gonna skip to this area, and we're sort of gonna talk a little bit about what what's going on, um, why they're holding the way they are, um, why it's actually good, why it's bad, and stuff like that. So let's sort of just skip right into it. Um... A lot of this map, and I'll, and I'll start this before when you get to the, the part we're going to be look, start looking at. A lot of this map is setups. Just how do you set up before they before the attacking team gets to do, do anything, and how good is your setup? Like what are the flaws and stuff like that? And that's a lot, in my opinion, just review and discussion of how you want to hold stuff. Yeah, like so I, that's I, a lot of this map. I think like there are a few maps in my opinion, like Dorado's one of them, Watchpoint's another. Um, Maybe Hollywood's sort of another one too that you like. You really actually need a VOD review as a team and like like actually go over a map review and sort of talk about like where we want to play, where we like you know want to like not let them rotate through and stuff like that. So looking at this setup right over here, right, the first thing I really want to go into is talking about is as you see like. Bulby's team is really like looking to hold server. Like they're playing around server. Why? Because obviously it's a good corner spot. There's a mega in here. There's only two like really entrances, right? And the angle, the LOS is really strong, right? At the same time, you see uh, Pure, he's holding the high ground, right? So they're trying to pre essentially prevent uh, Dojo from really taking the high ground for free, right? But this is essentially how off angles work, right? And something we're really going to talk about right now is like what we like to call like like the uh, ebb and flow, the rubber band effect. There's so many different names for it, right? Um, but it's sort of how off angles right now sort of work. So Zenith, you want to sort of jump into that? Yeah, I call it rubber banding. So if you, I'm going to be saying rubber banding for the most part in this review. But a lot of rubber banding is is just when when, when there's a right and a left, and when the right side swings out wide, the left side pushes in, and vice versa. If the left side swings out farther left, then the right side swings in. There's always a give and take, uh, and that's kind of where what ebb and flow comes into it and stuff. Um, a lot of defensive setups, mostly defensive setups, are based around having the angles. I talked about this in the review before where you want three angles as much as possible because uh, it's hard to deal with three. And then at the same time, the, the ebb and flow or the rubber banding effect is, okay, if they're going to push my Arissa in this situation, who is going to be the counter uh, ca the, um, the other reaction on the opposite side? Right? In this case, it's the Echo, and it should be the Sigma too. But there are ways you can set up in order to like enable that to happen a lot easier uh, than rather rather just be like a mid fight thing that you kind of just do on your own. So, like a lot of defensive setups, you should already default in the positions like that. Yeah, absolutely. So let's sort of play this out and see if we can find exactly what we're talking about here. Uh, Dojo's Ash actually gets picked off there. It's not exactly what we want to see. So now this is the first fight where actually Dojo sort of goes high ground, right? Looks to take that space, and we should expect to see sort of like an, a rubber band effect sort of happen here with the tanks, right? And then the reason why this is really happening is because it's, it's really straight, pretty straightforward, honestly, right? Um, let me make sure I have something open here. It's really straightforward, right? If the enemy team pushes up here, they have two shields, right? If they shoot, you know, Orisa, they shoot Sigma, these guys only obviously have one shield. Right? So what's going to happen to these guys? Whoever they shoot, as long as they're shooting this. As soon as that person backs up and apply pressure, when these guys go in. 
right? So, or to be the opposite way, which is a little bit more viable, right? Because the Sigma is the close target, right? So that's what, who technically they should be shooting, right? So they could shoot the Sigma, right? Sigma would go back. And then when that happens, these sort of walk up. And obviously, because of the setup, it's a little wonky, right? Because these guys can't really walk up and actually pressure the people because of the fact that they're on high ground, right? So let's sort of look at this really fast. Yeah, play it out here. Slow it down here. So there's a dynamite. Sort of see that they're playing that corner. You actually see them split shields here. So they actually split up. Well, what are your thoughts on this, Zenith? You can play it out a little splitting bit more. Is, uh, splitting, yeah, yeah, do a little bit more. Maybe they stack. Okay, <laughs> spice gets sort of wrecked. Yeah, uh, that's just like to me. That's that's timing based, in my opinion. Like a lot of that is he oversteps and tries to like take blue at the same time as as Bulby and his core are still looking at him. So yeah. he gets poked at it really like really quickly. But a split push is actually a good a good uh, um a good way. But it comes to like Matt, when it, uh, when it comes to the defensive setup of like. The rubber band. So on defense, if the steel, if, if the shields are stacked, that's when you want to play like as six, try to break shields, win the shield battle, or whatever. But the moment that the sigma's in an off angle and the Orisa's in another angle and they're not together, that's when you can split push. Right? Yeah. I, I basically sum it up to you do a four-two split or a three-three split based off of whoever you want to do, and the, the group of four or one of the groups of three is just living. They're just taking the the cooldown trade. They're just trading cooldowns, not really looking to do anything, while the other group, whether either two or the other, another group of three, are trying to kill, kill someone, right? Because right in that situation that you just played here, like, in my opinion, all it takes is Spice to throw shield up towards the Echo, and then Prodigy can just destroy Tuna pretty yeah. easily. Yeah, like they, they, they should but the take timing that fight. Is, the, the timing is the f other four that are going into server need to go first. Yup. Right, those guys need to be in server or like start taking the fight in server so that the other team's thinking, okay, I gotta go here. And then thinking about what the enemy Echo wants to do is he wants to pinch. So the moment that he's trying to pinch is when he gets two v one. Then your group of four backs off. You guys can force point, take the five v six or something yep. like and that. And then at that point too, if you want to, after you win to kill the Echo, right, you could even stack shields, right? You can your Shishima could like group up with your core and push really hard here and win that because you have a six v five. Or yeah, like you said, you can go point and like take another off angle and win it like that as well. Let's sort of yeah. see what happens. So they are forced to back up uh, and go from there. One thing else I also want to mention here, right, is the red team's got a break, right? Whereas the blue team's got a zen, right? So it's obviously the red team wants to try and force a brawl, uh, whereas blue team wants to play a lot slower and wants to play more for more spam. So that's just one thing I want to make sure everyone noticed. Yeah. So they're backing up. Again, Pure is like getting a decent amount of value on this off angle because he's not really getting punished at all, right? And like, if you really look at this, right? Like in terms of off angles, how they're setting up, it's one, two, three, right? When this guy obviously goes up, it's three, right? So I, I, I want to talk about a little bit about the fight where they actually sort of break through this because I think it was actually pretty well done to some extent. So here is when they actually like go all in as six, right? And they like actually force that brawl. But the problem I have with this is like this dude's still chilling, right? Like when they're brute forcing the core and they're like rushing in trying to force that brawl, it's really important before you do that, you scout, right? You can't just rush. Like one of the things that we were talking a lot about this earlier when we were looking, when we were watching this is like, you have to sometimes play slow, right? You have to scout, you just understand what's going on. You have to try and force out uh, the enemy team a bit back if you can. Obviously they have a break here, it's a bit harder, right? And then after that, after you forced out enemy angles, then go in and then take space, right? So let's yeah. sort of see how this goes. So they go in for the brawl, right? They don't force that echo out. And right now that echo is literally just shooting in the back. And now the echo comes here. And now he's going to pinch. Tuna's on the Orisa. And the enemy team wants to run away. And Tuna's like, nope, nope, you can't run away. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fortify and like block you. And then Pure comes in with a massive alt and throws them all up in the air. Tuna, unfortunately, isn't able to actually put down his alt because he went super aggressive. He went a little more passive there. He probably would have got Bongos out. And then this fight ends up. They, uh, what's interesting here is they, they try to turn this fight. What's your thought on this? That them thinking they can still win this fight here. Like they're they're down economy. They they're, they're down their you know Arisa. It depends, honestly. To in it, it it really is situational depending on like what like what ults are being thrown and stuff. Because mm -hmm. a lot of the econ like okay, so Arisa and the Echo are done, right? But yeah. Echo ult was used. The uh Bulby's team or the blue team used win they had used window. I don't know if they bobbed that fight. I'm assuming they did. I know they fluxed, right? So that's a decent ult trade for yeah. just walking in and they copied and fluxed now. And usually the rule of thumb that I've been telling my the third impact players is like 
a fight's a fight's turnable until you lose three. Yeah. It's in spam versus spam. Anything else that's different, it changes. But in spam versus spam, you can lose two people and still turn a fight if you can get ult value. So I'm not. I I, it, I don't think it's actually a horrible play to start throwing ults here, especially since you force so 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 many. There's not very much that they can do to other other than counter with trance, and they have they're gonna have a they're gonna have one bob and probably a second one based off of the echo ult charge. They'll have rally on point. There's not a lot that the blue team can do once they start throwing ults. And as long as you get value to, and to win that fight, it should be much of an issue. Yeah, absolutely. But it's just be careful and, like, loosely interpret going, like, like trying to turn fights if you're down two, right? If it's two tanks, then you're probably not going to win the fight. But if it's a tank, maybe, say say you lose an Orisa, and then maybe you lose, a, I don't know, an Ash or something. An Echo can flank and make a play. Uh, you know, your Sigma can m make a play. Your supports are still alive. That's fine. It just depends on who you who's gone. Because right here, the situation with... With uh, the, the Arisa gone, it's not too much of an issue. Yeah. The Sigma is still good. You have high grounds. You and have they have a lot of alts. Space. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The biggest thing I was going to talk about is positioning, right? Like, if you look at this, right? If they force card a little bit earlier before this, right? One of the biggest things I really want to get into about this point, right? Is the fact that they're over here, right? If you're able to slowly push them out and eventually come over here and start forcing cart and start flipping the map. So what I mean by that is if you can flip the map so the cart's over here and you start playing over here, if you can get to this position, right? And the enemy team is forced to play over here, they're forced to walk out. <laughs> and when they're forced to walk out, shit's like gonna hit the fan for them it becomes really 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 hard for them right because then they have to rotate and like when a spam rotates they don't have a corner they go into open space right so yeah. that's a problem obviously this rotation here isn't very easy right but in these mid fights actually forcing stuff like this to happen mid fight makes it very hard for the enemy team to deal with it because they got other stuff to deal with like a bob goes in like they can't just like stop the cart from moving right they deal with the bob and los the bob so let's sort of see yeah. how this goes though so Prodigy's on the Ash, taking another off angle. They're, they're forcing the cart, sort of like I talked about. And you have to also realize, Red Team has a break, so they want to brawl, right? And what's interesting here is Luke Mino is sort of on that high ground there. He I wonder if he manages to live. He's really low, the rally comes in. So yeah, this is sort of what I was talking about. The biggest thing is, I don't know how fast it takes them like, like it feels like they're still trying to fight this when instead of like like really i really want them getting over sort of over here i mean i know they have a brain they want to brawl but if you just go into that you're just gonna die right like th there's no way you win that like uh, you've got three people and you're down a shield so now they're kiting a bit more the enemy this is what i'm talking about right the enemy team goes into open space and now you've got luke me to take another angle or this is probably not gonna make it in time but this is looking very advantageous right for them Tuna could have touched. Yeah. He just went yeah. too early. Yeah. Again, it, it feels like a lot of the problems we're seeing with these teams, and that we talked about a lot, is like haste, right? Like it, spam is a very, very slow based composition, and you need to go slow, right? And then there's a certain point, like a, I, I always call it trigger, right? When you need to start picking up the pace and like going a lot faster. And I think that's the issue that we're seeing a lot is where people aren't really like noticing that and like picking up the pace. So here, yeah, it, and then it, they it, cap. It's it's very it's very different when it comes to certain maps, like how you want to be playing. Some you want to go really fast, some you don't really want to go fast at all. Yeah. But thinking absolutely. about Gibraltar, it's one. It's usually one fight to win first point, one to two to win second. I'll I'd say one and a half. Yeah. And, and then it depends two, on first two goes. to win third. Yeah. Yeah, and it's two to win third. So you can afford if four minutes. Like I said, I said this in the other review. Four minutes is a lot of time. Yeah. And if you just play a little more patient, like take a, like an extra five, extra ten seconds at the beginning to poke out angles and to assess what you're going to be doing and why, then the the end fight will be much much more smooth and it'll be way easier to clean up and you get more ults from that. <laughs> Very true. Oh, right, so we're running really low on time here. Let's sort of like look at like the second point. I'm like I don't really want to go too much into it because again we're really low on time. And uh, again tomorrow like we'll be having uh, this tournament will continue. We'll have like a single elimination for the finals. The qualifiers we'll be doing I believe educational segments there too. So if you're enjoying this, make sure to check it out. Um, unfortunately, Zenith won't be there. Unfortunately, we'll have Sword, the assistant coach of. Um, uh, yeah, it's really yeah. unfortunate. Okay. <laughs> we, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, let's talk a little bit about second. What, what are, what's your thoughts on second point here? In my opinion, like setup is like crucial, obviously, with spam comp in general. Where, where would you like the team, despite whatever they did, where would you think an enemy team would like to set up? And how, how would you like to set up so you try and get two fights here? Really fast. Two fights. <laughs> Man, it, it would have to be, you have to take a fight on cart. Like, yeah. If you want two fights, you have to take a fight on cart. So you need someone... You need everyone high grounds and your Arisa on payload, honestly. And yeah. if your Arisa is getting ran over, then everyone else needs to almost int in to get picks and stuff. 
Like, it's, it's, it's pretty risky corner, at that if, point. If it's that corner, if it's that corner right underneath the, the ship right there, yeah. Like right when it goes above that ramp, like the Arisa needs to be there, and then that's out of LOS of all supports. Yeah. So you need to be like Echo needs to be full uh. sending it on the opposite <laughs> side. No, it's hard. Yeah, I, I, I think, think, yeah, I think you do one fight. You yeah, yeah. I think you have to force one fight here and just like because you, you and more in general, you normally want to like force like better positioning, right, rather than like taking a scrappy fight because yeah. in general setups are good. Okay, so um, I think here we'll go. We're gonna go into an overview now. Talk about what we thought of the series, uh, and we'll go from there. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, uh, what are your thoughts? I mean, I, Koth was definitely interesting when I saw that hog, and I, I know JoJo sometimes runs some different stuff, so I was expecting some cool things coming out from them. Uh, hog, seeing the hog, hog was and cool. Ball, baby. <laughs> hog and ball, and they had the somber too. Um, so, I mean, to me, it was like, it, see, those, those type of comps to me are very hit or miss, right? It's either like, oh crap, well, the enemy seems like I've no idea what the hell to run against this. I don't know what the wind condition is. What are they doing? Like, it's so weird, right? And I mean, their wind condition is they play sort of slow to some extent, get like the multiple angles, get the hacks, get the slams, get the hooks, right? I get actual value out of like, uh, like yeah. disruption, like to say. Right, yeah. but uh, I feel like it, it's risky, right? It's risky. What were your thoughts? Yeah, Th those comps are the worst to prepare for. Like, playing against a team that only plays stuff like that is really annoying as a coach and as a team in general because you have to be really good at your <laughs> basics and understanding what's bad, what's good, right? So that's the first thing. I, I'm very analytical. The first thing I see when I see Hog Ball with Sombra, what was it, Soldier? Or something yeah, like so that. It was something. Yeah. yeah. When I see that, when I see that, I I I take away the the characters, the meme, all that stuff. But like, I see the the how fast those characters are. Sombra is in and out, and she's not back in the fight for very long. Hog is very slow. Look, is pit in pick base. Ball is the fastest character in the game, 600 HP tracer, and is in there at all times. So that's three entirely separate paces of character that you have in your yeah. comp. So if you can punish. The, the people that are playing slow and survive that first initial dive, then you're going to end up winning fights like faster and faster and faster. Because if the yeah. Sombra's forced out, then the ball can't go in as hard or whatever. Uh, if you're pl playing in places where you can't get picked, the hog is not the best, you know? So Absolutely. for me, it's just uh, just compose yourself and play <laughs> to what... To play to what their weakness is, and you'll be uh, okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, to me, it all comes down to basics, right? How, how well can you adapt on the fly if you see a composition like that? And if you yeah. do, then in my opinion, the enemy team is going to have a rough time because those those comps are so neutral-based, and like if you have to swap, it's yeah. so rough, right? Yeah, all right, so good. thank you guys. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, like I said, tomorrow we'll be continuing. Uh, we'll have more coaching segments. Uh, we'll be having Sword tomorrow. So thank you, Zenith, for coming yep. today. I appreciate it, man. Too. Um, I'm going to take it away, give, give it back to Shy Guy and Paul, and thank you guys so much. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yep, peace. You turn toward me and look so weak. I've never seen you with such tired eyes. And everything we said we'd be We just traded for a suit coat and a tie Community showcase here, powered by Third Impact and Natter OW. I am Paul, joined alongside Shy Guy, and we're just coming back to give you a little bit of a recap. Thanks again, also to Natter and Zenith for the coaching session. So, at the end of the day, here we've got one group just wrapping up here, so they're going to be a little bit, but we're going to check out the brackets regardless. And Shy Guy, who's moving on to tomorrow? 
Yes, as you can see, we have got seven teams ready to, to move on, still waiting on the, the results of Group C. Uh, but for now, we've got Avoided, Rats, Region, Underwater, Squad, Lunaris, Purple, and Kratos all moving on to the, the bracket stage there tomorrow. Uh, we will be taking care of getting them seated into the bracket and be putting out that information as soon as the, the last games of the, the day kind of wrap up here and we get a nice, neat little bow on everything. Yeah, and so we've got a really exciting schedule for tomorrow. Again, we can't know the seedings um, until that final result. So it'll be a mystery to everybody, but we will have something like we publish on Twitter between now and tomorrow, um, which brings us to a little bit of housekeeping. So thank you again to Invite Ramen and Advanced at GG for their support of this event and other events. Use code IMPACT for 10% off your next order at either website. You can also submit your creative works like art, cosplays, clips, or anything else to the third impact content cup that is thick hashtag ocs thick and you can submit that on twitter rules are on the third impact gg twitter account uh, but with that um last but not least you know thank you to everyone behind the scenes our producer teddy um everyone like raven and everyone at third impact for helping put on this incredible event thank you to the teams the viewers everybody involved i am paul and you can find me at Pauly C P A W L I E C on Twitter and Shy Guy, where can we find you? Find me at Shy Guy O W, keeping it simple, all lower cases on Twitter. Uh, and you know, we, we are now at the end of what was a really fun day of, of Overwatch. We've got some surprise teams kind of making their their way out of the groups all three teams that that won here on the stream today are going to be face or moving on to the the bracket there tomorrow we we've got the the best of the best and and now is where we we really get into kind of the, the nitty gritty you know with the the single elimination bracket with those spots in the main event on the line yeah, and that's where we're going to see the magic really happen. We saw some great back and forths, even in the best of three, some ba some great comebacks. And I'm sure we're going to be in store for much more tomorrow. So you can find us back here on this Twitch, 6 p.m. EST. You'll see these two pretty faces again when we get things started there. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, everybody.